derivation of a Zaku. It's not an actual Zaku. So if you look in the Universal Century timeline, you've got Zakus, mm -hmm. and they're like the grunt suits. And then you have these guys, which mm -hmm. are like kind of special guards. And you're not taking any of this in, are you? But you need to know it. When you mm -hmm. get into Gumbler, you need to know all this stuff because it's really mm -hmm. important. So start with an HG kit and you'll be really, you'll be well set. Don't go in with the Master Grade straight away because I know you, you get bored in five minutes. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'll, get one, I'll, get one, I'll get a perfect grade sent to you just to start you off because I know you like big things. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. You're with us. Okay. Ted. Ted. Right. I think we're on. Hang on. Hang on. We're on. We're on. We're on. Hang on. Yeah. That that was very interesting, Fox. Um I, I, I took it all, I soaked it in. I soaked it in. Like a sponge. Like a sponge. Like, like a sponge. I know, it's all gone now, isn't it? Straight I know all about, yeah, I know all about the different grades and things now. I, I, I even went out of focus as you Ted can even spell H G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Right. So I've made all the notes, and and I'll get I'll get one. Yeah, I'll, I'll await I'll await the postman. Good evening, everybody. And that was a riveting half hour while uh, Fox um, uh, updated me and told me all about Gundams and things yes. like that. He's uh, learning. He's uh, learning. I'm learning. Um, one day, one day, maybe, maybe I will build sci-fi. You never know. Yeah. Never know what's going to happen. Yeah, I needle um, both Ted and Pete about Gundams. Yeah. So, 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 so just to clear it up again, just to clear it up, they're not Transformers. <sighs> is, is that something <sighs> you said right at the start? Is that something you said at the start? I quit. I'm off. I'm going. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, right. Maybe you'll have to tell me some more after the stream. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Hey, it's it's Monday night. It's me and my old mate Fox down there in the corner. If you're watching, if you're wavy watching, hand, wavy, hand, wavy hand. I fixed yeah. my camera. It was knackered last week. It's working now. <laughs> yeah, and the winds dropped this week, so hopefully you can hear me. The cat. The pills worked, Ted. Is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had um, uh, Brussels sprouts for tea, so the wind might come back. You never know. Uh, right, yeah, yep, somebody right. in the chat was saying they're a bit gassy as well. So, yeah, uh, right, yeah, yes. Uh, what we're going to do tonight? We don't know uh, what we're going to do tonight. Planning, uh, plan, planning isn't one of our strong points, uh, but it, this is a stream for you guys. You guys to ask questions. Uh, if you do have any questions, just post them in large letters so we could see them. Uh, Hopefully we could see them anyway, but it moves so fast that we sometimes miss them. If you're watching this from the basically. Yeah, if you're watching this from the eModels link, if you click on the little icon in the corner, the YouTube, if you've got if you're not watching on a tablet or anything like that, sometimes tablets won't do it. If, or if you're watching on the app, it'll fire you across to um, YouTube and you can join in the chat if you want to. You don't have to, just uh, sit and have us playing in the background. Uh, right. Um uh, should we have a look? See who's was, was that a burp, Ted? Uh, wasn't a burp. Did I burp? You kind of went. Rrr, rrr. Was that a burp? No, it's was that our first stream it, model it, screen it, burp. <laughs> it, it, it was a microphone. It was a. Uh, uh, and now you are a true man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Chris is in from Ghost Models. He's one of the uh, admins tonight, uh, one of the moderators. If you do have any problems, if you want anything, just uh, pick it up with the moderators and hopefully they'll be able to sort you out. They'll hate you just to see everybody behaves, but you know we all do anyway. Yeah, remember, it is a family friendly stream, this, so no naughty behavior in, this, in the chat. Yeah, um, otherwise you'll find yourself sort of locked out and you won't be able to come back again. Yes. So, right. Uh, well, you, might get, you might get put on the naughty step first. Yeah. Yeah, unless it's like porn spam, in which case you're banned. Yeah, uh, that's it. All uh, right, who's in? Steve Shed Scale Models. Hello, Steve. How are you? Uh, I don't, have you seen that name before? I don't recall that. Uh, no, I think he's, I think he's, yeah, a, I think he's a newbie. He's a newbie. Stream, we but... welcome everybody and all. So uh, young and old, uh, professionals or amateurs or just people that want to glue bits together, everybody's welcome here. It's all about a bit of fun. Not necessarily always model-related chat. We'll talk about anything. Um, yes, we usually do. The we usually do. TK is uh, also one of your moderators for this evening. Yeah, TK is there as well. Um, uh, yeah, Sergeant Bones obviously picked up on the title of tonight's stream. No, Ted will never build sci-fi ever. He's afraid of it. Yep, uh, a bit quirky. It's a bit like going to the dentist. I don't know. I've heard him talk about Millennium Falcon before. Now you know. I know. I've heard Ted say things about Millennium Falcon. So yeah, I've, yeah. The only thing I've said about the Millennium Falcon, it's it's in your cupboard. Shut up. Shut up. It's behind oh, six. you. <laughs> six. It's the magic number. Uh, it's the magic number. 
Uh, uh, go and carry on down. We got backstepped. Ahoy, mates. Ahoy there. How are you? Uh, arr, 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 Gazzy Mulvin. I have asked behind. I have asked behind. Yeah, I knew a girl like that once. Uh, Gazzy Malvin's been in the chat before. He's from Malvin, apparently. We had that conversation once. Where's everybody from? And he went, I'm from Malvin. <laughs> <laughs> Gazzy Malvin. Malvin. I've been at Malvin. Have I been at Malvin? I think I've been at yeah. Uh, Gareth Redford, uh, said, uh, before. Gareth Redford, Steve Shed, uh, I keep repeating these. Uh, Steve Shed, scale model, says he's doing a bit of custom lighting and about to button up the saucer section, but need to work out how to connect the top half of the wires to the bottom half without having a mile of wiring. The saucer section suggests he's building a Star Trek kit. It could be. Uh, he's building a Star Trek kit. What he As could for do, lighting, I have yeah. no idea. Have a oh, look at a little plug and socket type thing that you might be able to take the model off the stand uh, and then plug it back into the bottom. Uh, have a look. Go to your local uh, electronics store. Uh, have a look in there. Ask them for some ideas about um, yeah. sort of plugs and sockets that might, might work. I'm actually allergic to lighting. This eagle's the first time I've ever done lighting, and that's because somebody else made the lighting setup for me. I just stuck it in. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, we'll get you there. If I if yeah. I've got to build sci-fi. We'll have you doing some lighting. Yeah, well, I've technically done it now, so it's, it's ticked uh, off. Sergeant Bourne said, technically, everything is a ship. Tank is a land ship, planes are airships, Enterprise is a spaceship. So Ted must build a ship that comes from sci-fi. Mm, good thinking, yeah, yeah. Right. Think, thinking out the box. Yeah. Uh, uh, right, I've, got, I've got to tell you, I've just remembered, for just, you know, my brain works in random ways. The German word for starship is Raumschiff. I love that word. Raumschiff. 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 It means room ship or spaceship. Raum is space, you see. So spaceship. Yeah, I could Raumschiff. pronounce that. If I had a go at pronouncing that, I could pronounce it wrong and the stream would be shut down. You pronounce it El Eduard. 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 Italiano. It's E D U. So how could it be Eduard? Eduard. 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 Eduardo. Yeah, it's uh, Rusting Customs, just to hand break. Oh, go on, Ted, sorry, you were going to say oh, something. Yeah, if it, if it was Edward, it'd be E D W. If it, it, so it must be Edward. So you've got to pronounce it properly. Well, w is double U, so it's still U. So it's the same. Think, okay, moving that, on. So. Moving on. What were you, who, yes, uh, <laughs> Rusting Customs says, Fox, I am building a. Ru and it, there. I, words. I can't even do English, and I'll take the mickey out of you. Fox, I'm building an Italiary transit all beaten up. Good man. Mm. Put a sharp mouth on it. It's the law. Yes. I have to put a sharp mouth on it. We'll look, yeah, we'd love to see it. Uh, yep. Yeah, that reminds us, we've got the gallery now on e-models, haven't we? And it's only another week till November? Yes, we yeah. will. First of November, Ted and I will knock heads together and pick our favourite five-star rated photo in the e-models gallery, which is emodels.co.uk forward slash gallery, I think. So if you've not uploaded a picture yet of one of your builds, stick it up there. Do some reviews of people's bills, uh, and they'll review yours, and we will pick a winner. And they are winning. Was it the Vought Corsair? The, the Vought Corsair. Yeah, I remember where it was. Yeah, it was something or other. Yeah, it was a very nice kit. It's a Tamiya yes. one, wasn't it? A new release. Yeah. It's a new release and tooling of it. So it's got all the photo etch and everything, and it's like, whoa. even I looked at it and thought, oh, because hmm. it's Tamiya, and the Vought Corsair is kind of a cool plane with the little bundy wings. Yeah. Yes, first of November we will do that. So if you've not done it yet, get your picture uploaded to gallery. Yeah. Uh, remember, you don't have to Some be professional. On it. You don't have to be professional, anything like that. Amateur or whatever, you will pick it on the one we like. Yeah. Not necessarily the best built or the best painted or the best presented or the best diorama or anything like that. We'll yeah. pick it on the one that we think. That's, yeah, it's a nice model. It's and it, be can be anything. it doesn't doesn't have to be something that e-model sells. It could be a gumpler or you know, a frame arms, or it could be a Kotobukuya, yep. or anything you want, basically. It could be something that, you know, your models doesn't sell, or a wooden wooden boat. It could be something scratch-built that you've built from yogurt pots and bits of string, and, mm -hmm. you know, your mum's old bras and things like that. It could be anything, so. Yeah, one or two things we have noticed is that one or two people have forgot to put the name on it. So put your name on it. I'll yeah, put, put your name on. Put your real name on, and, and your email address, so we can mail you and say, hey, you've won. Tell us where to send this expensive kit. Otherwise, we'll otherwise I'll send it to Fox. Yeah, he can build it. Yay! <laughs> then I'll send it to TK so he can hate it. <laughs> uh, right. Who, who else? Yeah. Well, Mr. Lawton. Good evening, Nate. Uh, TK is there as well. Phil East, Wayne Haywood, uh, Bob Bobbington. 
uh, yeah, uh, we're all on. Uh, right, yep, yeah, um, we're on up to about the bit where you were telling me all about them Gundams now, so the chat's on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, uh, moderator Chris says no porn. And we're saying about don't put links to porn and stuff in there, like you know this instant spam thing. He says no porn, instant ban after we take a note of the details for research. For research, skin tones, flesh, flesh tones. tones. Yeah, flesh Ted shots. needs to work out his flesh tones properly. Flesh so. tones. Yeah. Uh, always right. be learning, Ted. Always be learning. <laughs> always be learning. Uh, right. What have you anyway? It's the time to say what have you been up to this week, Fox? Uh, I've just noticed Tony Black says we should commission Fox to build the Millennium Falcon and then raffle it off. I'd never get past part six. You know that. You know that would happen. Uh, what was the question? Sorry. Hello. Uh, Who am I? Have do- what have you been doing this week? Oh, uh, you can see it there. Uh, this week, I have been mostly working on t- Big Eagle. It's getting so close. It's getting so close. I'm just editing part eight, I think, of the series now, in which I do all the painting and the priming and the things. It's basically had it's had all its paint done, had all the primer on, it's got all the paint on. Uh, it's had the weathering. It's for me. It's minimal weathering. It's quite disturbing. It's basically got a bit of a wash and a light misting of some dirty tones to suggest dust underneath, and a pin wash, and that's it. That's it. It's, it's not much weathering at all. It's, it's, it's like it's weird for me. Uh, it's loosely cobbled together. It still comes apart. These aren't glued in. Uh, the engine bits on the back aren't stuck on. The the schnoz isn't stuck on. However, for anybody building this. And wondering if you ever want to transport it, how you're going to transport it. You don't actually have to glue everything. It's almost like a snap fit. Uh, obviously, the spine and these modules here are glued. This is the, the, the reconnaissance pod is screwed on. The whole command module at the front and the frame it goes on, you can pop off. It just it just sits in place. The whole engine assembly at the back and the frame that sits on just locks in place. The pods come out. Um, what else have we got? I can pop the front off to get the battery changed. I've just got to build the feet. So if you're doing this kit, don't worry about on, on these bits on the side, this cage around here, it's just snap fit in. It's just pushed in place. It's all friction fit. So because I was if you're trying to figure out how to weather inside this cage and then get the cage on and how to glue it on without scraping all paint off and stuff, you don't. This just snaps on. So a load of it is just kind of friction fit. So if you're ever building this, just build it in your sub assemblies and stick to that because I can I can tap the front now, it's not coming off. But it's not glued in. Same with the engine on the back. It's just, just friction fit. So I'm loving it. And I was enthusiastic for this build anyway. But now it's actually started to come together. The sort of seven-year-old in me, the little seven-year-old fanboy, is getting all giddy because it looks like an eagle. It's like, oh. mm. so it's nearly done. But what I've been in today uh, is I have been trying out. And I don't know if this will translate on camera at all. But I have been trying out, or I've been painting, the thruster bells. Now, it might not come out on camera, but it looks like I've painted it in gloss black. Because I've got to do the metallic colours to make it look like turned aluminium. It's not actually painted in gloss black. That is purely Ultimate's gloss black primer. This stuff is awesome. If you've used the UMP primer or the Badger Steinar Rares or the Ammo One Shot, it's exactly the same stuff. It's just gloss. And I've got to tell you, that is beautiful. It, I say it won't come out on camera because it's obviously out of focus and it's the shine doesn't really show. But that, instead of primering it and then painting it gloss black and then going over with your metallics, let's do that. Yep. You don't have to thin it. That's through my 0.35 airbrush. Neat. Sprayed on. I put the PSI up to about 23, 24. It goes through my 0.35 Neo like a dream it's absolutely brilliant so if you've used the matte primers and you're looking at doing any metallic parts and you want to get a gloss black finish don't fart about with different paints just go straight for that yeah. i'm really pleased with that so that's tomorrow's task i've got to edit part eight that should be going up hopefully tomorrow then i've got to start on the final bits which is painting the engine sticking all the legs on getting all that done and one last thing i've been doing a little tests today i was saying about everything being snap fit all the engines and the, all the thruster, thruster bells, all of them can just push into place. You don't have to glue them. The feet underneath the middle module can just push into place. You don't have to glue them. You do have to glue the feet under here. So when I take this back to E models, I can just take it all apart and pack it. And I'm loving this. <clears throat> if you've been thinking about getting either this or the regular edition one, 
do it. It's a brilliant build. It's not complicated. It's not hard, and it's massive, and it looks brilliant. And I want to keep it. Pete, can I keep it, please? Please, can I keep it, Pete? I don't want to give it back. Can I keep it? Uh, yeah, Michael Jackerman said all it needs is Alan Carter. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've I've done one of the pilots as Alan Carter, so it'd probably fall apart on the way to him. <laughs> on the floor. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, good. looking good there, Matty. Excellent. Yeah. Um, oh, there's one other thing as well, uh, and I mentioned this in the video, but. In part seven, I bitched about the fact the, the anti-glare decals don't fit. I know you can't see it on camera, but you've got the one there and one there on either side. And to get them to link together in the middle, so you get rid of the seam line, you get a gap around the edge uh, of there. And I was like, well, there's nothing I can do about that. One of my followers, Robert Hobby, told me that's actually accurate. That's how it's supposed to look. And he said, I was the first person he's ever seen that's done the black anti-glare with a gap around the edge because and then I looked at a picture of the studio model and he's absolutely right there should be a gap but most people do it up to the edge so I was like yes by pure luck I got it exactly right so mm -hmm. so yeah if, you, if you've been thinking about getting one of these either the, re the regular edition or the super duper limited one with millions of decals do it it is a fantastic kit I want to keep it I yes. like it you never know he might let you keep it because he's got no space to keep it himself you never know I don't think it'll fit in their shelves but look Mm. There's Alan Carter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other guy's got his hands over his eyes. Oh no! They're going. Oh, we're going to crash. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll reveal a little secret as well, actually, because it's never going to happen. You know, in my in my videos, I do the little. In, in most of them, I've done like a little silly little comedy bit where somebody calls me on the com lock and I talk to them. Like one of the one week was Pete. I've got one coming up in part eight. I did actually write. The actor that plays Alan Carton, uh, Alan Carter, I actually wrote to his agent and sent him a little sort of two minute script and said, is there any way he could just get on his cell phone and record this and I'll do it as a little skit in the video. I wanted to have him on screen. It never happened. He never got back to me. No. So well, in, in a different universe, I would have had the guy who plays Alan Carter actually having a conversation <laughs> with me on the comment. Oh, that, that would have been a blockbuster. Uh, yeah. That would have been sweet. Because he's, he's really good. Like, he does stuff like that. I, mean, he, I never heard about so. it. You never know. Keep pestering him. Pest him yeah. soon, soon well, I spot surprise now. I would have been ribbing him about his piloting skills. Send him an E-Models mug. You never know. Might, <laughs> might be sweet. Send Alan Carter an E-Models mug. Send it broken. He'll like that. <laughs> Uh, oh right, where are we up to? Uh, uh, what have I been doing? I have been. Tell doing... what you've been doing. Yeah, what have Wait, I been doing? Out, been, yeah, yeah, it's your turn to ask me. What have I been doing? Uh, right, I have been doing some on the submarine, but really boring bits like drilling out freeing ports. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The submarine. yeah, so they've been going. But I've also um, and Scruffy Pup has asked me in the email tonight, uh, how we're going to have an another em open video yes we will i've been on it this week and uh, this week we are this time we are doing mud heavy mud and splashes uh so there'll be a bit a little bit of a fun tutorial mm. on how to put uh mig heavy mud on your okay. tank this is just a little bit of a an old model i've had lying around so we'll show you how to apply the mud and things like that and i still need to do those titles for you Damn it. Yeah. I have a bit of fun it's only a quick um it just it's only a quick video a little bit of a tutorial but it just take a little bit of time to get it all together and edit it all and things like that and uh, i'm just waiting for some uh editing to come back and uh, there'll be two parts there'll be two experiments experiment one and experiment two and experiment two will be the mud so i'm looking forward to that in the very uh near future cool uh two yeah. things i've just picked up on in the chat Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Lord Barkley the Third to me says, talking about the actor that plays Alan Carter, he's never forgotten. He says, Fox, I know someone who knows him. Go on there. Get, get him to contact me. Get him to send me an email. I've got a script ready. It's only like literally five lines. I can't pay him. Yeah. But, so that's probably a downside. Yeah, you know where Fox is? Get them in touch. Yeah, get him to send it to either me, uh, modelmakingguru at gmail.com, or even ted, ted at emodels.co.uk. Yeah. That would be an awesome thing to have in a video is actually him because i take the mickey out of his piloting skills in the video so just, <laughs> yeah if, point you, if you do know somebody who knows him please yeah. uh, one other thing as well i just and it's nothing to do with model making but i've seen it mentioned in the chat and i wanted to to help out smooth i think smooth was asking about he's getting stripes yeah. on his when he's filming stuff 
Yeah, he's got. A, he's just bought himself a light. I was just going back to it. He's got a new uh, sheet saw uh, desk lamp. Cost him yep. about seventy quid, but it's making his Logtech C ninety cam C nine twenty cam strobe. Any right, suggestions? Okay. I can help you with that because that's exactly what this camera is. Uh, what you need to do, Smoo, and this is for anybody anybody who's doing. Because I know a few of you in the chat that have your own YouTube channels and stuff and film builds and stuff. So if you're using, say, a smartphone or a camera like a webcam and you're getting stripey, stripey on the picture, it's usually because your lighting is causing the problem, especially if you've got fluorescent tubes or like me, I've got some LEDs that I forgot to turn on. Actually, hang on. There we go. Um, I use an iPhone to film and this the, the, the refresh rate is 60 hertz. So the shutter clo open and closes at 60,000, or that it works on 60,000 times a second, 60 hertz. In the UK, lighting flickers at 50 hertz, 50,000 times a second. You can't see it, but it's there. And it's the disparity between your shutter speed and the lighting that causes the stripes. So if you have a phone on your smartphone under a fluorescent light and you get all the stripey, it's because you're probably using an American smartphone. If you're using a webcam, smooth, if you've got the C920, there is a setting in there for NTSC, PAL or non. It's got an actual setting. If you go into the little desktop application, you can turn, you can set it for flicker adjustment and set it to, um, just try uh, try PAL first of all, because that's UK, NTSC is American. But it's because it's the shutter speed of the camera is out of sync with the shutter speed of your lights. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can tweak it. So sometimes you can get away with it if you have another lamp not the saying that you need to go out and spend 70 quid you can turn another lamp on and the first, the one lamp will sort of out phase the other one will flash at different uh hertz so you might sort of leave it up with that that might mm -hmm. be the way to get around it another doing model making but i know i know i know a lot of the people quite a few of the people in the chat have their own channels and stuff and do filming and things like yeah. that so it's something that people often come across and you see it in people's videos and you're like oh you've got the stripey stripey but it's very easily fixed. Yeah. Well, I've got I've got some um, I've got some of these uh, photographic lamps, so that when I'm doing my videos, I put these on. I've got fluorescent lights above me that are on now, uh, mm -hmm. but as as we said, the, the webcam set to fifty hertz and it takes that flicker out. But when so, I'm filming, so you only normally get them from fluorescence or from LED. You won't get them from yeah. bulbs typically. Yeah. So what happens with these bulbs? I put the, these on and it sort of blanks out the overpowers the white light the, the fluorescent yeah. lights anyway yeah. uh right well where, where else are we up to hope that hopefully that will solve it smooth but let's uh yeah one of the things well smooth if you've got the c920 don't set the exposure over the middle because if you set the exposure over halfway your frame rate will drop horribly i found that's what was wrong with my camera last week keep the exposure in the middle and, and adjust all the other settings to get a good color balance anyway moving on <laughs> that's tonight's youtube tips <laughs> Uh, I've lost a question. I did have a question there, but now it's disappeared. Uh, Playground says, do you have any advice to make me less of a hideous mumbling troll, green screen myself and, and shop in Brad Pitt, maybe? Yeah, it could be a winner. Uh, <laughs> or just, just just don't speak. Just do it in interpretive dance. <laughs> interpretive dance. Oh, my, do, do it with the hands. Popular. Uh, do it with the hands and subtitles. Uh, could do it with, I've, seen, I've seen whole videos done with subtitles and music. As long as your music's not copyright, yeah, yeah don't have the telly on in the background don't have music playing in the background unless you're adding music as background music later on just, just. Mm -hmm. anyway let's get back to model making yeah um... uh chris mentioned somebody's posted a question uh jamie i don't know what your question was but do it in big fat caps so we can see it yeah uh, somebody, said they, it. somebody said they'd sent me a question further up the chat it seems to have disappeared all uh, right uh, yeah the, the thing is the chat does move really 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 fast so uh, um Apologies, we won't, we'll try and answer as many questions as we can. We won't see every single one. Uh, Philip Rhodes actually asked a question. He says, Fox, what is next? Um, well, a coffee and then a, a kebab, I think. Mm. But I don't think he means what's next for me today. Um, after this, uh, I need to do some Gumpler. So I'm going to do the big 160 scale Freedom Gundam. Not the perfect grade, the no grade. And I'm going to do it in metallic, like bare metal. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Michael Jackman says he's got the top on his Panzer IV. Brilliant. I hope it work. Hope the suggestion about moving the those ammunition boxes in inboard uh, sort of cleared that problem with it up. Uh, good to see you got that going. Uh, uh, Rody Hobby says, "Question: What can you do when you have tip dry?" Um, 
That's dead easy. Uh, assuming you're using acrylic paints because they're a, they're a bugger for that. Um, dead easy. Assuming you've got gloves on. Um, take the crown cap off very gently. And then very gently, either just carefully get the needle between your finger and thumb and just rub yeah. the paint off. Because it's usually white paint is the worst for this, but you can usually just rub it off. Uh, or if you if it's really gunked on, get a cotton bud with a bit of um, airbrush cleaner or thinner on there and just very gently rub it, but be very careful because you don't want to ding the end of your needle. Mm -hmm. um, if it's getting worse and worse, if you're doing an acrylic paint, especially white, and you've been doing it for more than, say, half an hour and it's becoming a real problem, um, then it's usually best just to decant the paint to a container, give it a thorough clean out, and then carry on again. Sometimes you just have to do that. Yeah. One of the things you can do as well, if there's anything gunking up the nozzle, um, you can just get rid of any excess paint into a little container, put some thinners in there, and then what I call blap it, basically ram back on the air and paint and just blast. More than you normally give it, full whack on the trigger. So full air, full paint back and just go bang, bang, bang. And sometimes that will force any paint blobs to come out. Mm -hmm. uh, so if gunking it up. But a tip dry, just to do that on the end. But if you're painting with white acrylic paint, yeah, that's that's your life for the next three hours. Yeah. That, that's why you see some airbrushes they'll come with what they call the actual uh, they actually call it a pinch tip so you can get in and just wipe the yeah. bit and wipe the tip i norm yeah. normally uh, i've got a crown cap on mine what i often do is just have a uh, a small paintbrush handy with a little bit of thinners on it just to give it a, a wash off every now and again especially if you stop moving your, your your model around to get a different angle on it when you stop just before you stop just give it a uh a, a swish around with the uh, the thinners and, and off you go again no, uh, next question we have Alan from Northwest Modelers. This question: Best glue to insert windows on cars. Uh, I've got some. Yeah. Several different options. Well, I've got some. Well, I can find it. It's a different question. Uh, uh, I've got some. I'll use two things. I'll use either uh, Revell Contactor, which is a, not the normal pot glue, which is will kill the windows. Revell Contactor Clear, which is a clear canopy glue, uh, and it dries clear and it dries shiny, or you can just use PVA. The advantage of these two glues is A, they dry clear, they won't fog up the clear parts because they're, they're not like got any solvents in there. This is, I, I think this is basically just thinned PVA or very similar, hmm. uh, but they'll dry clear and they're not a great, they're not a massively permanent glue. So if you need to remove the canopy, you can just pop it off. It will make parts removable. When I put the canopy in, the clear parts in here, I push them into place and I put a little bit of contact to glue on either side, push them into place. And then I just wallop this all around the back of the window and built it up as a big pile. And then when that had dried, I went in with some PVA just to lock it in even more. So if it's say if it's a, but you say it's a car window, it's where you can't be using anything that's going to get messy because you've got the interior of the car that needs to look nice as well as the exterior, which you've probably taken great care to paint and gloss up. You don't want to get bits of glue all over that. So uh, Revell contactor, uh, there are other clear canopy glues out there, or just good old-fashioned PVA glue is really good because you can you can put your clear part in. If it splooges out, you can wipe it off with a wet cotton bud, uh, and it'll be a good grip. So they said not the most permanent grip in the world, but it's fine. If you're not a model, you're going to handle a lot. If you made like a shiny car, you're not going to be handling it a lot. So absolutely fine. But I've, uh, there are other ones. Uh, micro scale, micro clear is another one as well. Yeah, I'm that was going to say that for anybody that's not watching. Uh, yeah, TK had mentioned that as well in the chat. But anybody that's watching and can't see the chat. Yeah, the apparently micro... I have got some oh. micro crystal clear. I don't know why I've got some. I don't remember ordering it. Oh, right. I've got some of that as well. Uh, but don't use. For those who don't know, um, don't use normal plastic cement, uh, CA glue or super glue or any other kind of glue because that will fog up the plastic because the solvents will evaporate. CA glue, super glue, and you, it'll go on there clear and dry clear, but the cyanoacrylate will, it'll gas off and that will fuck up your glass. So yeah, it's, it's a gas gonna, causes a problem. PVA or specifically clear yeah. canopy glues. Yeah. Michael, Jacker said, yeah, Michael Jacker said he's using the contact to clear on his uh, Route Master bus, and that's, yep. got, that's got all the windows. So yep. if it worked for it's that a, many windows. It's a good question, because it's one of those questions that like 99.100% of model makers will ask because they've never especially people making cars or planes but like because they'll do it when they're younger and they'll be like with the glue and it'll just look like basically ass mm. they won't know there are different glues but i'd say if you can't get any of this just normal pva normal pva glue thin down a little tiny or not even thinned 
if you can get the extra sticky tacky glue, uh, which is like even stickier PVA, that's just as good. But it does mean you can pop parts off if you need to get in the cockpit or get into the vehicle or whatever. So it all goes around when you can pop it off and it just comes off with water. So. Uh, right. Um, uh, do you see another, uh, another question aimed at you? Um, yeah, by uh, Troughton Chad. Uh, one of his... Uh, Troughton, Troughton chart, yeah. One of his Citadel dry paints has turned into a spongy mass that repels paintbrushes. Any way of getting back to workable paint? I Hang on, I, you know how you just asked, you just had, you know how you just read that question out? Mm -hmm. My brain just listened to it and then completely didn't understand the element because it turned itself <laughs> off. What was the question again, sorry? A Citadel paint, uh, his Citadel dry paints has turned into a spongy mass. Uh, any way of getting it back to a workable paint? Um, you can that, just block water back into it to send it back down again. Mm, yeah, um, but the pot designs for those paints are notoriously badly designed, so they don't close yeah. properly once you've used them. I'd just say get a fresh paint. Yeah, I was going to say that as well. For the cost of them, just, yeah, just yeah. call it a day and go get another one. Uh, yeah, it's, it's often a problem. You uh, you leave your paint open, it dries out. Yeah, oh, the, the the Citadel ones are classic for that because of the silly little pot designs. The one thing I hate about Citadel paints is dumbass little pot designs that you, once you get a paint built up on the back, you can't get that lid down properly. Yeah. So they do dry out really easily. But remember, remember the days of uh, the old humble enamels. Well, they still have them now. But remember yep. when we used to paint with them, and uh, uh, after so long, you couldn't get the top back on because all of the yep. grungy paint it builds up. It just me, the, I'll tell you now. Every time I go into my paint stash, and I have to get an old because I've got I've got like eight million Tamiya paints in that thing over there, and the, I've got all the modern pots, the little whatever they are, ten mil. But I've still got a load of old pots, the big 25 mil pots they used to have. And sometimes there'll be one specific colour I need, and I've only got it in like a 20-year-old pot. Now, I know the paint inside is still fine, but you get it and you're like, you can't get the lid off because it's gunked up with paint. And I, have, I actually have downstairs in the kitchen a thing for getting lids off jars. You clamp it on and I use that. Because mm. once, those, once those lids get sealed on, you're like, oh, I can't get it off. I, I did see somebody that um, somewhere on Facebook that they, they, they turned the pot upside down and put paint thinners in it, airbrush cleaner, and uh, that sort of did the job. It eased it off. So yeah, uh, I don't know if it worked on a twenty-year-old pot though. That hasn't been opened uh, in about eighty years. <laughs> nothing, nothing lost if it doesn't. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can just put water back into them. Uh, yeah. cause they do dry out, so you can just bang water back. And you can put normal thinners in there, like acrylic thinners. I don't know how that would affect their particular drying and self-leveling because they are beautiful for self-leveling when you brush them so i don't know how that would affect it uh, uh, playground since uh, since he started using pipettes to dispense do to dispense paint to his palette his citadel mm. pots claws and stay liquid yeah, yeah. That's okay. uh, there were a couple of uh, questions that i spotted um but uh, ted and fox got my new airbrush like fox says uh, shaman adrian did you get the, the neo or is that what you mean? You got one of these? Yeah, it's these brilliant. I love this. My uh, Neo Free Water. Uh, I must have a look um, at them. I must try them out. When I go to Telford, this uh, 22 days, I think it is, to Telford. I must yeah. try them out. Oh, God. Uh, oh, uh, one other thing. A couple of people have said, I think Tony Black's mentioned it, and somebody else has mentioned it. Um, they've also actually used uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement on clear parts, and it's not fogged up the glass. And I think Tony mentioned it in one of his videos as well. So that might be worth checking out. Not slapping it on. Not slapping it on. No. Yeah. no, no. Carefully apply it to the surfaces and place the thing in place. That may well work. I think I say Tony's done it and it seemed to work. So it might be worth trying it on a spare kit just to make sure you don't want to ruin a good kit. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I know I've missed a load of questions. Though, there's a load of questions. Been... Yeah, the chat's been moving quite well tonight. Uh, quite busy. There's a lot of chat. Yeah, we do apologise if we do miss your questions. Uh, but uh, either fire them through to ted at emodels.co.uk mm. or uh, put them in uh, capital letters in the chat. I will try our best to see Charmin, them. Charmin Adrian says, for Christmas he's going to treat himself to the eagle. Yeah. Oh, there's right. two choices, the standard edition and there's a specialist. And the only difference between the two is the specialist has some, a big poster and stuff like that, but it also comes with that a million more decals for all the little shading panels and things. Uh, which you can just mask off and paint, but it'll take you a lot. It took me about a week to do the decals. Uh, but that's the major difference, is you just get all the extra decals. Mm -hmm. so, but either of them, you still get exactly the same kit. It's brilliant. So do it. It'd be a good Christmas tea treat. Uh, on the note about uh, uh, e so, e Vincent, emails. Vincent says, Fox, it's the MIG stuff. 
I don't know what you're referring to. Mm. Tell me what you're referring to. Oh no, uh, oh, sorry, yes, when I was talking about the, the glue for clear parts, it's not, to me, extra thin, it's the, the ammo by MIG extra thin oh, glue. I did thought that was some glue. Yeah, something. Apologies, I suddenly yeah. realised that. They've developed their own extra thin glue and it's um, apparently got on canopy. So don't use Tamir extra thin on clear parts. Let's just step that one back a bit. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of it, uh, guys. Uh, yeah, I did see something. I think it was on e-models. Uh, uh, yeah, Tony, Tony had it in his video, I think. Or he's, he's going to have it in a future video. Mm, that's probably what it is, the way I've seen it. I knew I'd seen it somewhere. Uh, right. Some questions for this evening from the e-mails. Uh, from uh, Chris Williams over at Gross Models. Uh, Favourite time to build? Morning, evening, night. Well, uh, that goes out to everybody. When's your favourite time to build? Morning, evening, night? Uh, yeah. When you when you when you wake up at silly o'clock in the morning and think oh, I can't, can't sleep, I'll go down to the model bench. Uh, my favourite time is usually in the evening. I, I do try to build during the day, but it just doesn't seem to work somehow. There's too many interruptions or people coming in and sort of asking you to do things. Uh, so I so I like to have my dinner, settle down, get a refreshing drink on the bench put some music on and sit down in an evening and do some building mm. uh, yeah. uh for me it's any time mm. any time apart from dinner time and food time um i mean i do this for a living i do it day in day out so it's all day for me um so there's no real favorite time i i sometimes like after dinner to sit down and do simple things like decals if i'm going to do decals I like to do those after I've just eaten because then I'm like sleepy and tired and I can just chill out with the decals. If I've just had my tea, I don't really want to be doing fiddly buildy stuff. So for fiddly buildy things, it's always like the start of the day. I try and get up at nine every day. Sometimes I don't, I'll make it, sometimes I don't. But I try to get at least doing something by maybe 10 o'clock or so, have my morning coffee, my morning ablutions and uh, get going by 10. But any time of day is fine for me. I always seem to end up doing things at like half one in the morning because... I think, well, I've got another, I'll just do another hour and then I'll start some really complicated thing and then I'll regret it about two in the morning. Yeah, lots of people are saying different times. Uh, Wayne Haywood says, my favourite time is Monday night, is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, while we're, while we're rabbiting away in the background, you can yeah. build, yeah, that's the idea of us. You just play it along in the background. Uh, a lot of people are building in the mornings. A uh, few uh, like us are in the evening. I guess a lot of people are as well at work, so evening yeah. time is the only time they get to build. Um, I'm going to be finishing work shortly as well. The, my work finishes for the that's summer season. He crashed uh, out some kits. So hopefully I'll be able to dedicate a little bit more time to building. But I do find that what happens is that sometimes I'll come into workshop because we've got the laundry machines, the, the washing machines in here as well. I'll come into workshop to put some washing in the washing machine and think, oh, oh, I, I didn't glue that bit on. Uh, right, I'll just glue that bit on and I'll go back in the house. And about four hours later, she's coming look at me, looking for me. Where you been? Uh, right, uh, yeah, I've finished my building now. So that's what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're just walking past the bench. Oh, yeah, I'll have to glue that bit on. I didn't glue that. Was that dried yet? And then they are. Mm. Uh, Shaman. Uh, Mike, there, Michael Jackman says, daytime because the paints don't look right in artificial light. Good point. Good point, yeah. Uh, Kenneth, hey, Kenneth says, I like 3 a.m. for painting. Yeah, I know you, Kenneth. That sounds about right for you, that does. Sharman <laughs> uh, Adrian says, evening time with toast and mug of tea. I like that, apart from the tea bit. Make it coffee and you're in. Yeah, as long as, you, as long as you drink the tea and not your brush cleaning cup. Yeah, D don't make the mistake I have of having a brush cleaning cup that's exactly the same as one of your actual coffee mugs. I've made that mistake. And I've, I've discovered over the years that when you're painting with acrylic paints, Whatever colours you use, your brush mug ends up looking like coffee or very strong tea. And that's really bad when you've got two mugs exactly the same, one with coffee, life-affirming, delicious, delicious coffee, and one with ick, and they look the same. Yeah, just try and keep the cups different. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it. yeah. Uh, I, usually, any time where you won't get disturbed. If the wife says, "I'm just nipping to town," you can get in the workshop. 
Yeah. Phil Lewis says, any time for me as long as I get peace and no interruptions. And then a bit later he says, wow, that makes me sound really grumpy. <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. Yeah. No, it just, make, it just makes you sound not single. <laughs> yeah. That's when you have to build yourself a cave and you can lock the door. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's Chris's question. Um, from Scruffy Pup, uh, his first part of this question, uh, with um, he sent us in. Have you, have we, excuse me, I'm burping again. It's Yay, a, burps, Ted burps. Burped, burped. Next up, Ted will swear. <laughs> uh, hi, Ted and Fox. Have we or any viewers had any experience with MR kits? With who? E, e M H A R. M, M H A R. MR kits. I know that they do figures, um, they do quite a range of things really. There's a lot of First World War tanks and things. I know that E models sell them. Personally, I've never had any um, specific sort of dealings with them. Uh, I've heard a few good reports that they do go together quite well. Some of the kits are only small kits and there's not many parts in them, but the, the, what they have is quite detailed. Hmm. Uh, so if anybody else. Great to say. Yeah. If anybody else has uh, any experience out there in Chatland, let them know. The thing, I've, the thing I've learned is, I mean, there's lots of brands I don't know anything about. Yeah, because there's a lot of brands that make things that I have no interest in. So, you know, companies that just make planes, I've probably never heard of them because I never do planes that much. But the thing I've learned over the years is that everybody has like the knowledge of the main brands. You've got Tamir, Ravel, uh, you've got yeah, this and that, and all the big boy companies. But there are a lot of really small companies out there that make things like you know sometimes they'll make small run kits sometimes they'll make paints sometimes they'll make tools there's a lot of like companies you've probably never heard of that actually make some really good stuff so it is worth when you're going through you know your model store or wherever and you see like a a kit of something and it's like a funny company you've never heard of and you're thinking oh never heard of them um Check them out because you can actually get some really good stuff from some of the tiny, tiny companies that you've never ever heard of. It's always worth just exploring. Uh, it's always it's always worth doing a, a Google search as well for a review of a kit. There's a there's a good chance that somebody's somewhere has built it. Yeah. Uh, if it's been out long enough, somebody will have built it somewhere and they'll give an online uh, review of it. Which yeah, is, get on the YouTube's and check it out. Yeah. Except there was something I was building, and I was like, I need to find out how something on this kit goes together, for for whatever reason it was. And like nobody in the world had done any anything on YouTube about it. I was like, oh, fudge. I had to figure it out for myself. <laughs> uh, we have a little question for Philip Rhodes. Yep. Question for everyone, not just for me and Ted. What would you like to see turned into a kit that's not currently available? Include scale. Mm. Uh, I would love to see a proper, proper kit of the of a blade runner spinner and a proper mm -hmm. kit of deckard's car not the ones that are already out there like the limited garage kit things but a proper kit proper company made it and it's got nice bits and things either deckard's car in fact both deckard's car and a blade a spinner they'd be great i'd have to do them shiny with a bit of weathering deckard's car not so much so that mm -hmm. would get me to make a shiny car yeah no I I would probably go back into my world uh, from whence I came of model ships. I think I would like to see either one uh, HMS Invincible, uh, the through deck. Is there not already an Invincible? There is. There is. There is a kit, but I'd like to see a large scale kit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Not you know. Not there's lots of small kits about, but I'd like to see a large scale kit. Of well, like one thirty fifth. <laughs> yeah, one sixteen scale. Uh, Actually, I forgot to add scale. I'd say one twenty fourth. Yeah, well, car yeah. size for my for my Blade Runner cars. Yeah, they'd be a nice big model. Or I would like to see uh, another submarine again. I'd like to see a Trident submarine with an interior. Yeah, because uh, I'd I I say wouldn't a normal. Tr That's the thing, right? People that make submarines that make modern submarines. I don't get this. If you look at a modern submarine, they're kind of boring. It's just a tube, and you paint it black. Mm. So if you made a modern submarine, you. You kind of want an interior because otherwise you're just making a black tube. Yeah, I've seen some brilliant models of like modern, of like you know the modern Russian American submarines, and you're like, it's just a tube. It's I could get a drain pipe and paint it black and. Put Which in tube. fact, that's what most model submarines, scratch built submarines, begin life as is just yeah. a drain pipe. Not not a complaint about the kit, but just the fact that modern submarines aren't very visually interesting. So, mm. build a U-boat much more interesting. Yeah, with a full interior. Yeah. 
Yeah. So what what would everybody else like to see? Uh, yes. That would generate some uh, interesting uh, thoughts there. Because you, you, people ask you this question and you say the first thing that comes to your mind and then you sit back a little bit after they've gone or the next day and you think, hmm, I'd like to see that as well. I think we've been asked this question a few times on the show and it's like, I always give a different answer every time. <laughs> I forget what I said the last time. Uh, Robert Blaylock says, drinking your brush cleaner is a modelling rite of passage. passage. Yes, it is. Mm. As is gluing as, a bit fire to your face. Yeah, as is knocking your glue over or knocking your paint over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or re removing half the marks on your cutting board because you spilt glue and it makes it all dissolve away. So like a cutting board with half the grid missing. Uh, <laughs> Ian Price comes in with a, a recommendation. He's been gluing photo etch and canopies and he's using rocket card glue. It's basically a fast drying, strong PVA, which mm. is thinner than normal PVA and dries clear. Fully cures in 10 minutes. So yeah. if it's, if it's yeah, working for Ian Price, it's working for Ian Price. Now, I have heard people sticking on photo etch with PVA. The, um, thing, the thing with PVA is it's like, you know, I've got some downstairs from an art supply shop that I won't mention. But PVA is actually a really good glue. It's it, Everybody says, oh, it, things just fall off all the time. And it's like, it's not the best glue in the world for grip. But if you put in a little bit of photo etch, they're not going to fall off. I mean, PVA glue is quite grippy if you don't fiddle with it. And let's be honest, the majority of us make models that are display models that aren't really ever going to be handled. So if you're gluing things on with PVA, they're probably going to be fine. I've, I've used PVA. I You won't see it down there, but the little Warhammer land speeder, every single dude in that land speeder, and they're all hanging out the side, they're all glued in with PVA because I'd already painted it and I didn't want to mess up the paint job with normal glue. So, yeah, PVA is great. Yeah, I think a lot of people dismiss PVA glue as sort of a, a craft glue for kids. Well, it is, but it doesn't mean you can't use it. It doesn't mean you can't use it. Yeah, it's the same stuff, and often it's the same stuff that you'll get from a DIY shop as you'll find in a in a bottle for kids. It, yeah. it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's like me saying I don't use PVA because it's a craft glue, and then I start covering my model in floor polish and salt. Battery is low. Please Hello. recharge Hello. it in time. Oh, what was that? Hello. There's a voice coming from the heavens. I thought the door from above when I said the operation. <laughs> Sorry, it was just a little bit of a technical hitch there. Yes. Also, I, I think I've got fireworks going off outside, so apologies. Yeah, fortunately, I've worked out the date. I'm, a bit, I'm out of focus. I'm green now. I'm out of focus, I think. I'm just trying. Oh, there we go. Uh, I've worked it out for next week. I thought that our live stream would have occurred on bonfire night, which would have been horrendous. Yes. But we don't. We are appear the night after i think we're on the sixth let's go through the notes now uh doo -doo -doo. oh yeah shaman adrian says about you saying you want to make a trident submarine but with the interior shaman adrian says don't want the russians to know our trident secrets yeah <laughs> that's it is they're probably really old and knackered by now and terrible so there's well, really they're actually like... talking about some bringing some about a service now aren't they they must be oh uh, 25 25 plus years old yeah, I'm sure the Russians have more advanced stuff than we have. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Lewis says, question, I need one 100 scale figures for a diorama. Any recommended manufacturers to look out for? I can think of two. Well, I don't know manufacturer, but one, um, there's probably a railway scale, model railway scale that relates to one 100 scale. So go and have a look uh, on the Amazons and the Ebays or on the on e-models, anyone that does model railway stuff. Uh, but also Bandai have a very small number of one 100 figures for their master grade kits. And they're just like, people in high-vis jackets and engineers and stuff but mm. i know of them uh i think uh depends what diorama you're doing uh, i think when, when we go through uh, what's in store we're going to do ships tonight i think i saw some figures in there that were suitable for ships depends what diorama you're doing whether you can adapt them or not oh you have, just have to check the sizes but have a look through e-models put figures in Hmm. Nate Bliss says that some other Japanese brands that do 100 scale figures as well. Because a lot of companies will do, or there's companies that will do figures for Gumpla, because Gumpla come in, one of the scales they come at is one 100 scale. So have a look at that. Well, I just saw a chat down the bottom that's just come in from Rune Strand. Uh, just noted it's snowing outside. Wow, where, do you, where are you living at? I think it's in the Netherlands, Norwegian type place, aren't you? I think uh, so somewhere up north. It's not even the end of October and it's snowing. Yeah, he says he loves that site. It means he can stay in and build models for, for the next four months. <laughs> uh, uh, 
Right, firework night is on Sunday. That's right, Sharman. So we yeah, but we get we get fireworks like a week before and three weeks afterwards. So. Yeah, so we will do our best next week. If you, uh, oh, not even Halloween, it'll be a Halloween show next week, won't it? I don't, I don't know. I've, 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 I've never, never remember when Halloween is because I don't do it. So <laughs> yeah, trick we, don't trick. Get, we don't get many kids from around doing trick or treat in this round in our way at all. Yeah, they probably all get to your gate and think, hey, we're not going in there. Yeah, or they just all stood around outside like, look, there's shark mouth on my car. <laughs> but like, I might drive to the shops or something to get something from the shops, and like, you might see one kid out with the parents, and that's it. Uh, it's not such a big thing like it is in the States. Uh, Halloween's on Tuesday. That's mm. true. Yeah. So we, we, could have, we could have a spooktacular Halloween show next week. Mm, spoopy. Spooktacular. We'll have a, yeah, we'll think about that. It could be a... Um, could be a theme for our what's in store, maybe. Yeah, Smoo said, you guys won't need masks then, lol. Oh, There's no right. way to talk about Ted. Yeah, on that on that note, let's go and have a look what's in store, shall we? Yes. Yes, it's getting up for that time. Uh, yeah, right, I've got to find the right button to press. Oh, God, don't press the wrong button. Right. It's been Screen nice knowing you all. But, yeah, if if we lose you all, oh, I'll have to lock it on you as well, won't I? Yeah, um, lock, it on, lock it on you, not me. <laughs> don't lock it on me. <laughs> Yeah, lock it on you. So you, no, uh, no, lock it on me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm lost tonight. Right, screen share, sharing screen. Let's have a look at what's in store, people. Uh, right, can you see that? Is, are we, yeah, are we all what's in store? Right, good. Now you There's don't a theme for tonight. As always, we have a theme for tonight. Yeah, what's the theme, um, Ted. Yeah, that, we just open the page there on the offers. Don't remember. Don't forget. Have a look in offers if you're wanting any kits. If you're dipping into e models. First page you should go to is offers and see what's in store, see what's on offer this week. And it seems strange that um, sometimes some of the stuff that we've mentioned in um, the live streams uh, appear on the offers page as well. So yeah, that was in last week. We did that last week, didn't we? Mm, we did. Yeah. I'm just going to stick this heat hawk back on the back of this Giarrazzulu while you're talking. Ah, oh, right. It fell off. Is, is that that transformer thing? Shut up. Uh, uh, right, uh, I did ask last week what you wanted to see this week, and uh, one or two people have messaged saying they want to see some ships. So yep. we'll have a look at some ships of various. So tonight is sizes. big boats. Yeah, big boats. Uh, I this, like big boats, and I cannot lie. Big, yeah, mind, this is one of the kits that I'd actually thought of building a while ago. Um, it's the Talieri at Vosper MTB. Um, the from the San Nazaire raid. Uh, which was quite a ra uh, famous raid um, with commandos and such um, attacking. Well, the I'd say famous, but not that well known. If you know. Yeah, what I mean. there's been a couple of films made about it. Yeah, um, one not, of those things that that never really gets much of a mention, and not a lot of people know about the San Jose raid. Yeah, um, basically, if, for those that don't know, it was um, a group of uh, MTBs uh, escorting a converted uh, lend lease ship. Uh, which had been made to look like a German warship uh, to, into the San Dezir, uh dockyard. Um, apparently the docks were the one of only two places in Europe that was big enough to uh, repair the Scharnhorst, or one of the great uh, capital ships mm. of the German Navy. Uh, so the decision made was uh, to go and attack this dock. And they did so by, as you see in the background of this kit, ramming the ship into the dock gates. And then, it was great. They just rammed it through. Yeah. Was the plan to ram it through, get it stuck, and then explode it? It was. Uh, unfortunately, something went wrong with the timers on the... Uh, as I recall, something went wrong with the timers on the explosives. Uh, and they thought the raid was a bit of a failure. And it wasn't until next year that the ship actually blew up. So yep. it was a bit of a success in the uh, end. Nate Blair says, was it not Operation Chariot? Yes, it was. It was Operation Chariot. That was the name of it. Uh, yeah, so the, this particular Vosper MTB, MTB 74, uh, was actually converted uh, from its usual configuration to have uh, two torpedo tubes uh, placed on the bow mm. of the vessel uh, to fire uh, uh and they also carried a group of commandos to uh, to the the operation. It only really in World War Two, it, it's just only the British will actually think of painting one of their boats to look like a German boat to get down German lines. This is great. Yeah. Well, I watched a documentary the day about the number of times the 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 Allies deceived the Nazis in the war. And it was things like Operation Mincemeat, where they said they were going to land in one place and they didn't. And then because then the Germans at that point didn't trust any 
intelligence they got because it might be fake they actually did receive actual documents saying what was going to happen on d-day but they didn't believe it because they thought it was another trick by the british yeah so mm -hmm. it's like but we apparently called their bluff loads of times during the war i love it it's only only world war ii would you get that let's just paint yeah. it like a german boat there you go yeah but yeah but that's it this is it um this is in i think 135th scale is my right? yeah 135th scale mm -hmm. uh, fantastic ideal color scheme there uh, anti-dazzle scheme uh be brilliant to do that as Ooh. well um um it could be this we were discuss, discussing this before we came on fox and i that uh, it could be actually made to be radio control this be yeah. Big enough. yeah it would be you've got big the know-how yeah, I'm sure you if, could you could wangle it to to whiz around if you know how i i did build a a, a vosper mtb um mm. quite a while ago i built a balsa wood one in 135th scale and it was big enough to uh power by radio control so you it, know what you should do you should get it radio controlled get it in your local boating pond but take along some really thin foam things paint up to like dot gates and bang it through the gates <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember that the yeah talking about sailing on your pond don't paint them gray i remember painting this one the one i had in blue and gray which was the um uh, the coastal to command colors and you could guarantee that you'd be belting on at full speed and lose sight of it yep. just take your eye off the ball for a minute and it was gone yeah, until you until it crashed into somebody else's model boat yeah then you're all about it right. now from this point on i have to say i know nothing about boats so apart from the bit i knew about the raid on san Jose, uh -huh. And a little bit about one of the kids. I know nothing about boats, so I'm completely leaving this to Ted now. <laughs> uh, and for, uh, uh, just before we move on from that one, the, if you wanted to, you could add uh, an MTB crew to that boat as well. So there's a group by Italieri. I'm not sure what the figures are actually like, um, how, how the, the cast or how they're made. Um, maybe somebody in chat can uh, make a comment on how good the castings are for the MTB crew. Uh, now yeah. I have to do. I have to do this, Ted. I have to do this, Ted. Mm. Who makes this kit? Italier, it, Italieri. It, <laughs> it, it, I, am I, I'm saying Italieri again, aren't I? It's Italieri. I used to say uh, it's one of those names that people always pronounce as Italieri. I don't know why. Italieri. It's Italieri, but I, I'm the same. I'm like Italieri. Italieri, but I just find it funny pointing out when you can't pronounce things. So, oh right, the next one. Uh, I chose another one for any of our brothers that are across the pond. Uh, this is another famous um, torpedo boat, really. This is the PT boat. Uh, this is PT-109. It's uh, the representation of GF Kennedy's uh, boat that he was in command of. Um, mm. I think it was actually sunk under him. Um, maybe somebody out there knows the history of it. I'm sure it was sunk uh, mm. while he was on it. Uh, but does it say anything in there? Uh, does it say anything in the description? On the uh, yeah, on the on April 1943, the command of PT 109 was taken by Lieutenant Junior Grade John Fitzgerald Kennedy, the future President of the United States. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't say anything about his history. But I'm sure I've seen the film PT 109, and it was sunk. But uh, yeah, that's uh, there is a crew available for this as well. Um, I couldn't find it on e models. It it's might, it might be there. Yeah. It might be out of stock, but there there is a crew available for it. Uh, just while you're there, the Mojo Photo says that moment when you try and scroll Ted's browser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll cl click another tab to try and open it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I've done that myself, and I know he's screen sharing because I'm streaming with him. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, right. Staying on the theme of Second World War, uh, this is um, uh, an unusual ship. Um, something with we don't see really that often built this is uh, hms middleton 1943 it's a hunt 2 class destroyer um the destroyer escort um these were quite a well-known utility ship um built sort of in a rush um built from 1939 um i don't know about the hunt 2 but there were certainly 86 hunts built uh, this is a 1700 scale, so it comes in at what size does this come in at? It doesn't say what size it comes in at, so um, <clears throat> but yeah, these were usually found them on uh convoy Arctic con uh <clears throat> Arctic missions, sorry, <clears throat> Arctic convoys, 
uh, or, or any convoy, convoy escorts. The only problem with them is that they couldn't travel very far without having to be refuelled. Um, these were built early in the war, or started to be built early in the war, and then there was a lot of developments after that with them. Uh, they, they came the Castle Cas Castle class cruisers, which looked very similar, uh, had the same gun as well. Um, but these were used mainly in submarine hunting and convoy escorts. Um, they weren't very comfy. Uh, they were built in a rush, a um, bit sort of um, tender in a heavy sea. Uh, were a bit cramped. Uh, in all, there was uh, the the battle honours. They, I think, they sank about twenty one submarines, uh, and for that, there was nineteen hunts lost uh, to to the other side. So that's, Beyond, Hope, Beyond Hope says it's the one seven hundred scale dazzle camo that gets him. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah the, these can be once again. The, speaking of that, about the dazzle camo, uh, they went through a lot of paints, uh, a lot of paint schemes. <coughs> Excuse me, I need a drink. Oh, quick, get the gin out, Ted. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just. Michael Jackman says Hunter class, very small design for inshore waters. Yes, they they were designed uh, for coastal command. But a lot of them were pressed into service for um, convoy escorts, or, or they would they would go out and meet a convoy uh, and bring it back. Uh, uh, that's what they probably would do. Um, yeah, but that's that one. Um, Isn't it amazing when I, it's weird how I go quiet and I just like I'm not talking constantly. <laughs> yeah, yeah more often now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, they are quite a nice ship. I like this type of ship um, with the open bridge. You see, see up here. I don't know if you can see that little cursor moving. Um, mm. The thing is when they uh, had open bridges uh, and that little bit of a construction around the edge of the bridge, that was just the wind deflectors. So that's mm. the best you had. So, yeah. yeah. So when the weather got a bit horrible, <coughs> you just uh, put your duffel coat on. Sharman Adrian says, it would be nice to see boats with an inside detail like your U-boat. Yes. Uh, do, um, do, do you get many like boat kits that have that kind of, not obviously like 1700 scale, but some of the like torpedo boats and PT boats, do they have... I, I've never seen. I, I don't recall seeing one. I know that there's a few Castle Class Corvettes about, uh, and one or two people have uh, converted them to all the insides, uh, so you can see the insides, and they've done some fantastic, fantastic jobs on them. But I don't think there is a particular production kit uh, of one with a full interior. But it would be awesome if it would. Yeah, that's maybe one on the list. Uh, somebody asked that question before. What would you like to see? Yeah, a World War Two ship with an interior. Yeah, be, be awesome. Oh, so that's that one, and that one there for a uh, one seven hundred scale boat, ten seventy nine. Yeah, tenner, eleven quid. Good yeah. weekend build. Good weekend build. Yeah. Uh, moving on, the next one. Uh, uh, this one. Um, I if I'd known about this two or three years ago when I was building my Ravel one seven uh, seven C. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, now I couldn't find the submarine because I was going to show the submarine and just uh, bring back um, uh, horrid memories for Fox. Uh, yeah, dr dr drilling all those uh, freeing ports out like, <laughs> I, like I'm doing on mine. Uh, it was it was a good kit. It was a good kit. Some of the detail on it was a bit lumpy, but the actual hull was quite good. Mm. Yeah, drilling out all those freeing ports. Ugh. Yeah, but as you said, uh, as you said in your build, the uh, the figures let it down. Uh, yeah. I think maybe Ravel have realised this. It is an old kit, and these are all figures, uh, but they probably brought this kit out to sort of get around uh, and put some decent figures in. <laughs> for, those, for those that don't know, um, I've built a couple of Ravel's 172nd Wolfpack 7C U-boats. Uh, it is a nice kit. It's three foot long, and when you've finished it and painted it, it looks fantastic. It's got issues, but then, you know, it's just like every kit, it's got some issues. But the one thing that I didn't like about it was it comes with like 150 billion figures. But first and foremost, they're little figures on a stand, on a base. Um, and also they're made out of blue plastic vinyl, which is bendy, floppy, stretchy. So you can't really paint it. So they give you all these. They're really nicely sculpted. Lots of little details in these little 172nd scale figures. But you can't use them because as soon as you prime them and paint them, it just chips off because if you touch them, they bend and... The, so that really, they always got thrown away. So if they, now they brought these out as a, hopefully, I assume in plastic and polystyrene, not vinyl and not with little bases on them, then they are, if they're the same figures and they look exactly the same, they are really nice little sculpts. So it's worth picking this up if you're building that U-boat because it mm. is a really nice kit once you've finished it. Yeah, 
so yeah so yeah i think the the little blue figures were just sort of like um a museum type piece weren't they they weren't actually probably meant to be painted i don't know because they were, they were beautifully sculpted they were like you know the, yeah. the guy had a big thing of there's, a, there's one of the characters has a big like thing of rope next to him and you can see all the texture on the rope and this is in 170 second scale so but they were just mm. completely useless so if you are if you are buying that kit and it's a, it's a, not a bad kit if you are getting that kit Pick up these as well and throw the other figures away because they're kind of the more like little toy soldiers you got in the seventies than anything yeah. else. Uh, I'm uh, not, yeah, for, once again for six pound seventy four p. Yeah, uh, can't yeah, be wrong. that bad. Uh, Ray Aquilina is in from Malta. Hey Ray. Hi Ray. How are you? Uh, uh, people from all over the world. Um, finally, what's in store tonight? <clears throat> um, couldn't really go past mentioning warships without mentioning uh, HMS Dreadnought um this was really the turning point in modern uh warship building um the dreadnought was uh first of its class uh from then um the ships became uh pre-dreadnought or post-dreadnought uh it was really a sort of a change in the way warships were built um a huge ironclad um uh, built in 1906 it You're was a huge actually, ironclad. yeah it was <laughs> built in a year and a day um, from its concept, uh, from its laying down to its building. Um, the Admiral, I think it was Admiral Fisher, wanted it built in a year. Um, so before they'd laid everything down, they'd stockpiled all the um, all the steel and everything. And I think within a, a month, um, the keel was laid and they were putting bulkheads in. Um, something about I did read something about the workforce were forced to work. Um, uh, overtime was compulsory. Uh, meal breaks were thirty minutes, and yeah, a year and a day, and it was finished. Um, it was built in Plymouth. In uh, any guys from Plymouth down there? Um, it, oh, it, Plymouth. That's oh. right. I, that's not a Plymouth accent, is it? No, I'm, I'm sure. No. Carry uh, on, Ted. Yeah, I'll go uh, back to sleep now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, uh, the famous dockyard at Plymouth. That's where it was built. Uh, and the thing about this ship, it was meant to be um, sort of the great warship of the day, but it never actually fired a shot in anchor. It didn't take a, a part in Jutland. It was in for refit. Um, uh, the only claim to fame it does have, it was uh, credited with ramming a U-boat, uh, but it never fired those guns in anger. Um, what else could I say about it? I do know it was powered by steam turbines. Uh, the turbine. Yeah, the first capital ship to be powered by steam turbines, and it was at the time the fastest battleship in the world. Um, and once the German Kriegsmarine saw it, um, uh, they had to change their views of building their own ships and had to build to match it. So yeah, that was dreadnought, a turning point in the world's navies. Well, we've learned some things tonight, Ted. Yeah, a bit of history. Learned, eh? you, know, you can pronounce Kriegsmarine. Kriegsmarine? You can pronounce that, which is quite impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, jump at a 1 700 scale. That would go, yeah, yeah although probably a different era, but that would go with the uh, Hunt class um, crew, uh, destroyer. Uh, 1 yeah. 700 scale. Uh, does it say how long that one is? Yeah, it's 230.9 mil, 23 centimeters long. Uh, mm -hmm. With a beam of thirty-six centimeters. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to boats, Ted, you are James May, aren't you? Uh, I am a bit of a you know everything. A bit of a nerd. You know yeah. all the things. Yeah. I, I, I reckon I could have just gone out and gone and got a curry and sat down and had my tea, right? and you would have just been happy uh, going up there for hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, know your beans. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps I have the advantage of being able to pick what we show and what's in store. So, yeah, there is that. So, so pick the ones that I know about. Uh, yeah. yeah, always uh, an advantage yeah, that we uh, like to take care, of, uh, you know, make most of. Yeah. Now I do think this one being trumpeter. Uh, I know that there is. Uh, well, it certainly shows you here. There's uh, some photo etch for it. Um, uh, there's lots. John Hope does ask if it's, if it's a waterline or full hull. I think it's a full hull. Full hull. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's have a look there. I know with Tamir ones, they usually mark. They usually titled as a waterline kit, aren't they? Yeah. Um, is that the dreadnought? Yeah. Um. Up there, that, that place up there, I don't know if you can see, if you've got your screen big enough, that place up there, the little crow's desk at the top, that's gunnery control. 
Uh, it's worth. He knows all the things. Uh, so it's all the things. Fantastic ship. Lovely little ship. Uh, Robert Blaylock does ask if you're James May. Does that make me Richard Hammond? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd um, rather be Richard Hammond than uh, Clarkson. Yeah. So lovely little ship. Right. Let's come back. Let's stop sharing. Let's find the right button to press to stop sharing. And come back. No doubt when I come back. Share. I'll be out of focus again. Yep. Yes. yes. We had a couple of questions come in while you were doing your uh, shippy things. Mm hmm. Uh, I've actually lost all of them, <laughs> apart from one. My apologies. Uh, from Sharman, who says, "Does Ted, do Ted and Fox or anyone in the blog in the chat have any other hobbies?" Um, no, I, I just haven't got time for any of the hobbies at the moment. Um, the wife has recently made me uh, uh, take up the hobby of decorating, uh, applying ah, that universal papers. British uh, domestic uh, hobby. Yeah, reluctance. So decorating the house, that's become a hobby of mine. Are you going to weather it? Yeah, I, I've tried for some chipping effects, but uh, she's not having that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, me, I obviously do the models. Um, I, I've not done it for a long time, but I also do... Uh, um, I used to do it for five years, I did an online comic strip. So I do draw stuff. And about many years ago, I used to compose music write and compose music but i haven't done that in a long time if you watch my videos it's usually my music so mm. i haven't done that in a long long time all my music equipment used to be here it's not there anymore mm. um, somebody else in the chat also asked how the eagle was coming on so i assume they missed the beginning um it's there it's coming on quite nicely uh, just a little bit of a uh, little tiny bit of weathering left to do and i've got all the engines uh, in gloss black ready for the metal colors uh, and then it's kind of done then so Episode eight should be up in the next day or two, and then episode nine should be the last one. So if you if you saw this earlier in the stream, you'll 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 have heard all that before. But for anybody else who missed the beginning, that's where we're up to. I love it. Get yourself one; it's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just going back through the chat as you were catching up there. Uh, uh, Trot and Chad says Cruel Sea was an awesome movie. Yeah, it was an awesome movie. Uh, he's got a Ravel 172 flower class snowberry and he's eventually going to turn it into the Compass Rose. The Compass Rose, if uh, you apparently, know. it's locked on you, Ted. Apparently, oh, is it locked on me? Sorry, uh, unlock it, it's unlocked. Yeah, um, so so just, to, just to refresh for whoever I was talking to a minute ago, it's there, that's the eagle, it's done. There you go. It's not done yet. It's not finished. Yeah, yeah. Run, run this when the, when we're finished. Run the stream back, and you can see uh, Fox giving a full insight yeah. to what. Did about a ten minute stint at the start. I'll do a bit yeah, of things start. for you. It was at the start, so it'd be easy to find. Uh, uh, Brett Nelson got a rare Monday off. Uh, Ooh, uh, Stefan Last is a record collector, mostly CDs. Got five thousand of them. Wow. Uh, uh, Does that make me then just. The CD collector. Yeah, Michael, Jack some vinyl. yeah. Michael Jackman says, we mentioned the, the dreadnought there. He says the trumpeter 1330 scale uh, is a much better. Yeah, well, probably wouldn't be. Uh, nice of course, the only boat I'm in interested in, the only boat I'm going to make is my space rattleship Yamata, mm. which is there and still looking at me. I'm going to get around to it eventually. I will, I will, I will. I no, will, I'll, I I'll, will. On that note, I was just looking at a pitch, uh, message there from Tony Black. Uh, the Brits sold Japan battleships. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so um, there was that was mentioned in one of our one of these e model streams at some point. There was something about yeah, we mentioned that because the my casa street in somewhere and there's some street yeah, in uh, my casa, um, the Japanese battleship my casa is to the to Japan what the victory is to us. It's a historic battleship. Um, it's in a museum. Well, it's a museum in Japan, uh, and it's um, was built here in Barrow. Yep, Barrow, Barrow. It Barra, built in, it built Barra, in Barra. Barra. I went to Bradford then, didn't I? Barrow. That's not, oh. that's not Barrow. Barrow's Barrow. Uh, uh, yeah, so one or two people now are talking about uh, what their other hobbies are. Linda Pell yeah. says astronomy. Uh, watching nice. Astronomy. Nice. Instant respect. <coughs> yeah. I like people that like the sciences. Mm. I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of those people that I had a really pointless science education at school because it was like chemistry just was really badly taught. Biology was interesting. But basic and physics was here. Let's make a circuit. Boring. Since I left school, I've learned more about physics and cosmology and everything else than just by learning it. Um, Stefan last. Uh, oh, hang on. A couple of things. Uh, um, Kenneth says he's a part-time model builder, a full-time model collector. <laughs> it's a disease. We've all got it. Yeah. We've all got it. 
Yeah, Carl says he does photography. Yep. Um, von Holdinghausen. Yeah, von Holdinghausen says they were built on commission for Japan, the, the battleships. Mm. Uh, Stefan Last says, has Fox released any music anywhere we can have a listen? Yeah, but I don't know. I don't think I can put the link into chat. Yeah, um, Dog Sounds, isn't it? Yeah, if you go, I can't put it in chat, but it's basically if you go to dogsounds.com, I'll try it. Hang on. Make sure I've got it right. I don't think I'll let you put it in. Uh, for, no, I'll see, I'll see if I can get that. See if it works. Hang on. Uh, I hope so I spell it right. Basically, I, I, I released an album with the music, but then I made it public domain. So it's free to anyone to use as they see fit. Um, if you go to dogsounds.com, G-O-D-S-O-U-N-D-S, and then on the right-hand side, there will be some menu options, and it'll say Dog Sounds Music Free, get it here. You mm -hmm. can download. You can download a bullet. You can use it in YouTube. You don't have to credit me. You can mix it, and match it. It's all public domain. I made all public domain. So yeah, you, you'll find uh, many of us YouTubers, um, e model, e modelers that when we put music in our e models videos, it's usually courtesy of Fox. Yep. Or if you go to uh, freepd.com, that's a, a website that does free public domain music. I'm on there as well. As well, there was a load of as well as a load of other stuff. Oh, uh, right. Uh, yep, just working down again. Uh, Trotton Child says, working on miniatures on a film at the moment, apart from that, kids and grandkids. Don't care about the last bit, the working on miniatures on a film bit. You mean actual yeah. miniatures can you, for yeah. a film? Can you, can you tell us? Is it, or will, is it a secret? A lot of this stuff's secret, isn't it? You mean actually making studio miniatures? Yeah. Have you just become the coolest person in the chat? Yeah. I think no, you have. He, yeah, he could, he could, he's probably one of these guys that has a secret CV like I do. Yeah, could be. You probably like, you know, it's. Like, I, tell, I mean, I tell you, God, tell you, if if you if you're ever thinking of getting into scratch building stuff, and I, I I admit I can't do it, but if you're ever thinking about getting into scratch building stuff, just go and read up about the people that made studio models way back in the seventies and eighties, like you know the guys that made the Eagle for TV or all the Thunderbirds models or anything like that, or the people that made the Star Wars models at ILM or just any how they built those things is incredible and it's all scratch built so yeah just go and check it out man i was reading up about how they made this thing and it's fascinating brass tubes and perspex and wood and everything's great uh yeah uh, there's a question come in uh frankel uh is an old model kit that is discovered and the decals have yellowed is there any cure uh, i think oh. really they'll be rather fragile if you try to use them yeah um, yeah if it's that old and they've kind of gone it's uv damage that makes them yellow and sometimes it's the chemicals in them as well if they're that old they're not going to unyellow yeah um so i would just tend to see if you can get some new ones yeah if, yeah there's a lot of uh aftermarket decal makers out there that mm. uh, or ask around somebody might have the kit yeah uh, be willing to separate them and send you the decals that's often works quite well a couple of people have said sunlight, put them in a clear plastic bag and leave them face up on a sunny window for a few days or weeks. That might work. Um, it depends nothing. on what's caused the degradation. Yeah, nothing lost, is there? No. Yeah. For um, most things, you can actually get modern decals now anyway. So give it a try. Yeah. Um, somebody asked a question, it. where was it? Uh, Sharman says, when putting a kit together, do you research the subject? I do. I quite enjoy doing that bit, actually. Um, I won't sort of research in depth, uh, but I'll look for pictures of the model. Um, I'll look for a bit of history about it. I might read the odd book about it. Uh, just to, um, I wouldn't say get in the, the groove for it, uh, just a bit out of interest, really. Uh, but I'll usually, you usually find me Googling pictures. Uh, I'm trying to find more interest, you know, bits to add extra bits bits of tech off uh that's it and then i'll just ignore it all and do what the instructions say <laughs> yeah uh for me there's probably two reasons why why i would do it um when i because I, I used to make models all the time then i was i fell out of it for like 10 or 15 years and then i got back into it again so before that getting back into it i never used to research them. i used to make them for fun when i got back into the hobby i did the same i followed the instructions until i was commissioned to build that revel u-boat then I had to do my research because obviously I was making a model for someone else and they wanted it to look a very specific way. So then I, I started researching the U-boats 
and that kind of got me into doing the research for a build then so if it's something real world then yes i'll try and do research to see what the real thing looks like if it's something fictitious like a you know a tv or a movie model i'll research what the actual studio model looks like because i'll always make the decision of do i want to make it look like the fictional vehicle as in how you what you know what the vehicle is supposed to look like or do i want to make it look like the actual studio model because when you're doing a, a filming miniature build often what you see on screen is nothing like what the actual model if you look at a real studio model they've usually got really bad paint jobs because they're made quickly so when it i do my federation runabout hello sorry ladies in your room again it's, uh, yeah um yeah when i'm doing my federation runabout at some point in the future i'll probably make it look like this well i've got a choice to make it like the studio model which is kind of really badly painted it really was or what you see it as on screen and then there's just stuff that uh the only research i'll do for gumpler is what is often if I want to paint it a made up color scheme, so I'll go online to look at other people's paint jobs of that same kit to see what they've come with. Because coming up with color schemes for Gundams is actually really, really hard. It's not as easy as you think. So I, I tend to research now more because, especially if it's a real thing, I want to make it look. And if it's a studio model I'm building like this, then yes, I want to make it look like the studio model if I can. Uh, speaking of studio models, Trot and Charge got back to us. And as we thought, you can't see any more. Small budget and signed a contract, so we can't see it too much. Oh, does it involve space? Just tell us it involves spaceships. <laughs> spaceships. <laughs> tanks, tanks, tanks. Spaceships. spaceships. Tanks, tanks. Uh, uh, yep, yeah, so, so that's it, yeah. Uh, yeah, and Phil Rhodes, yeah, I do have a secret CV, but I can't tell you about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Zadster says, for his, for his Yunkers 52, he keeps watching where eagles dare. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Watch films. They're good. They're, they're often good research. Uh, it's, Trot, Trot and Chart says no, but that, I don't know if that means no. It's not spaceships, or no, it's not whatever you said. Tanks. <laughs> uh, if yeah, Chris Smith said if studio models are badly painted, then all of mine must be studio models. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the the surprising thing is with studio models, and if you're into that kind of thing, I really recommend looking up uh, as much as you can. Um, there's two different types of studio models. There's the hero model. And then there's the background models. Uh, and especially in Star Trek, because I spent years making Star Trek kits, you have the hero model, which is the big budget model. Like, for example, uh, you know, Voyager. Um, they spent weeks and weeks building the filming miniature. By miniature, I mean it's like six foot long. Uh, Voyager, and it's all fully lit and stuff. And that's a beautiful paint job. Uh, but then you have models that were made in a hurry. So things, that, you know, they didn't spend a big budget or put a lot of time into it. So things like um, the runabouts were still well painted, but not quite as good. Um, and they had other lits and bobs. And then they had the sort of ship of the week models, which were ones that you'd see in one episode in the distance, in the background. And there was a tradition um, at Paramount that what they used to do was when they were filming DS9 and they got to the bit where they'd have all the Federation starships in the massive fleet ready to attack the Dominion, what hundreds of spaceships on screen. What they basically did was they got a load of um, like AMT, Ravel uh, kits of various spaceships and all kinds of stars like Starfleet. Basically went out, bought a load of Ravel kits of Voyager and all the starships. And they just kind of said to all the staff, just kit bash something. Just This is like people in the production office and script writers and secretary. Just kit bash something and just paint it. It doesn't matter how bad it is. And I saw pictures of some of these like ships of the fleet and there were things like voyager with the nacelles stuck on the top and a saucer underneath and they were like painted like like they just got a brush and gone and they were like green and pink and red and yellow but they didn't care they just needed stuff in the background so it does vary studio models can vary from exquisite quality for the big filming hero models down to real rough stuff where they've just made it out of wood and a bit of perspex so Mm. You know, do the research because if you're if you're making a re if you're reproducing a studio model you can sometimes actually save yourself a lot of work you can actually realize if you're doing the studio model i could spend months and months painting this model to look super realistic but if i do the studio model i can do it in half the time because when they did weathering they just got paint and went through a straw you could reproduce that so there you go there we go 
Oh. Like I've probably done more weathering on this than they actually did on the filming miniature. And that's just a, a, a wash, a pin wash, and a bit of spray of mist. There's not really much weathering on that, on the real thing. So, uh, uh, I think uh, yeah, somebody said that uh, the Doctor Who models look um, more close up. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like the like things like um, the Federation runabout again. When you get the kit, you've got two holes into the interior for the windows and clear parts, but there's no interior. But if you look at the studio model. It's just literally two bits of black things stuck on. Two pieces of black self adhesive. That's two windows. There you go. Or they painted it black. So all I'm going to do is throw the clear part away because it's useless and it's it's got a ridge around it. I'm just going to put some plastic card behind the hole and paint that black. It's accurate to the mm -hmm. studio miniature. But it saves me a lot of work. Yeah. So do your search. It's really good. It's also good fun just looking at how sometimes how bad these things actually look when you see them for real and not actually on... Especially things made 10, 20 years ago when high def TV didn't exist, everything was 480p and they didn't have to worry about it. Yeah, right. uh, uh, Fox, how about a demo of Eagle Lighting? I think you uh, I could do. I could do, but there's great big masking tape over at Windows. Uh, right. You could have turned it right. And I can't show you that other bit either. Actually, can I, can I do it? Let's have a look. I've got to take my tape out now. Uh, Hang on. It still works. Oh, well, yeah. You can't see it from that side. I think we're getting an echo from your uh, speaker, Fox. Oh, hang on. Let me just... Hang on. Oh. Shouldn't be, but I'll turn you down a bit. Uh, is that better? Yeah. Some of these echoing. Hang on. Hello. Hello. Is that better? I think it's gone now. Yay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I've taken What's my on? tape out now. Oh. Uh, you, you just put Fox back a full week. That's just that's just actually stopping things spraying all over. I don't really need it now. It's just it's covering up the gaps in behind the window. So if I'm spraying the outside, it doesn't go into the cockpit. Because I'm that anal when it comes to filling gaps for spraying. Oh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of discussion going on about really bad Daleks. I think um, I think the BBC did go through a phase of really bad uh, special effects, didn't they? Um, yes. People, well, they, in, people in rubber suits and things like that. Well, one, one of the reasons suits. behind um, one of the reasons behind why they changed in the new Who, you know, the new sort of Doctor Who that came in in 2005. One of the main reasons they changed the, the look of the TARDIS when David Tennant took over, or toward, at some point the TARDIS changed inside. They changed it because they realized that the set they had, the sort of coral set from the first couple of series, looked really bad when they filmed it in high definition. Because up to that point, they were filming it in standard definition. They weren't filming it in like, you know, 1080p. They were filming it in 4 because everybody had normal TVs. So in 2000, I think six or seven, they had to rebuild it. They had to rebuild it so they could actually film it with proper film cameras and high definition cameras because the new people would be watching it in on you know massive TV TV so they had to rebuild the whole set because what they'd done was fine for standard def but if you look really closely it's kind of shoddy so <laughs> uh, Mr Lord says Babylon 5 special effects and I've said yeah uh, Babylon 5 the good old Amiga computers and using a toaster a video toaster graphics setup Those are the, they were cutting edge graphics for the time you've got to be honest because they're using a Commodore Amiga and not like a studio setup quite impressive <laughs> But I never got into Babylon Five. I thought it was rubbish. Yeah, that's yeah, that's probably yeah. It's probably the bad special effects that put me off sci-fi. Yeah, that's what it. Yeah, until they, yeah, until they get their act together, I'm not watching any sci-fi. Uh, right. define, define getting their act together. Yeah, uh, so they have more flesh tones. Yeah, more flesh tones. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they can wear them. They, they, they can wear head face masks that you, you don't actually see their eyes realize. You know, their eyelids and everything just painted with mascara uh, you just want you just want barbarella the tv yeah. series don't you uh, mm, mm, uh, right yeah, uh, right steve shared scale models ted fox our email e models going to be at telford this year i can't find them on the traders list unfortunately not no um uh, i think we said this uh, I think we mentioned this in another stream or something. E-models uh, are, are an online trader. Um, and for them to uh, get a stall together and sort of log all the stock out, take it to the Telford, sell the stock, take it back to the stall, log it all back in again. Because 
excuse me, everything is done on computer and computer, computer stop control. Uh, it would really just be a too hard to do for them to do. They have considered it just putting a stand up, just a sort of a, a meet and greet type thing. Uh, that could be a possibility for the future. Um, but they wouldn't sell anything. It would just sort of a meet and greet, take yeah. along some of our um, e-models bills and things like you could have a look at and things like that. Um, but that, that's something we can talk about um for in the future perhaps yeah um, they say they, they have they have considered it um and they do they do keep considering it but it, like ted says it's just purely the matter of because they're open at the weekend so you've got stock in the store you've got stock at the trade show people sell it people buying when stock is sold at the trade show it still shows us stock on the website but then they've got to get all the stuff back and then it's the whole you have to do a massive stock check and when you've got that much stock it's a massive job and it's just something that they just haven't got the capability to they haven't got the resources to do it right now because i've in previous jobs i've done shows i used to work in detailing and we used to go to wax stock ironically in the telford exhibition center um we do wax stock take a load of stock do that bring it back and then i'd have to spend like a whole day doing a massive stock check to get everything back to normal so we don't start selling things out it's basically a nightmare so right now it's something they haven't got the the manpower to do but it's something they they are thinking about so yeah as i say we, we, we may consider like a meet and greet type thing yeah i just have a stall show some of our models off um a few giveaways and things but fox and i will be there hopefully we'll be there on on the sunday yes um, i think we're going to wear our e-models jacket i yeah, see we'll have, we'll, we'll have our e-models jacket on we yeah. easy ones to spot will be uh, a cool hat may not be this cool hat but it may be a cool hat yeah um we'll probably um you'll probably find us in the bar um if we're not um lying down or yeah well yeah you'll probably find us in the bar yeah all uh, right so uh, yeah. jarman says it costs too much to do a stall actually not that much to be honest yeah it's not it's not the problem is not the expense of the stall because you tend to make back um most things like you tend to make back what you paid for the stall anyway yeah. um and you know they, they they understand that it's really great pr and it's, it's good community outreach it's just the physical process of st stock when you're an online retailer, stock is a nightmare. Yeah. So anything off-site just becomes a living hell. Uh, and it's just more just a case at the minute. They're so busy right now, they just haven't got the, the manpower to take somebody off staff for a day and a half, two days, to do a stock check to make a note of what they actually sold. And mm. It's all very complicated. Yeah, so what we'll probably we'll do... Never say never. Yeah, yeah, Fox and I will be there, and I'll have a word with uh, Pete May, and we'll try and get a handful of uh, stickers and yep. things like that. So if TK says uh, he'll also be there as well. Yeah, TK will be as there. Well Chris, as well Chris from Gross Models. Yeah, so there'll be uh, there'll be a few uh, a few a few well known faces about. So come and see us, say hi, don't be shy. Yeah. Uh, you know uh, that's what we're all about. Um, uh, hoping to meet some of you guys as well because we yeah. just see you by names. We don't really know who you are. I will accept a free hot dog from anybody. Yeah, just yeah. saying. No reason for saying that, but you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So let us know who you are. You know, we'll, somebody will come along and say, "Hi, I'm I'm such and such." For, from the, the, you probably probably have to wear a badge. You should wear a badge with your um, YouTube. I think they'll know who we are. I yeah. think they'll recognise the silly hat and the the, the magnum moustache. No, I'm on about the jackets. I'm on about knowing who they are. You know, I won't have a clue. Yeah, I won't have a clue. The thing you'll, your thing you'll learn about me if you meet me in real life. The thing you'll learn about me is I have no memory for names at all. Mm. You can tell me your name at the start of the conversation. By the time we've had three lines of dialogue, I've forgotten who the hell you are. Yeah. So don't be offended. Yeah, so I'm such and such, and I'm like, uh, yeah. So what you could do, what you could do, is get yourself some little bits of masking tape, and you could stick it to your jumper, and you could write your name on it, so we know who yeah. you are. But keep in mind as well that the other thing that makes it difficult is a lot of people have one name in the chat here, one name on Facebook, one name on YouTube, and it's like I don't know who half the people are. Mm. Uh, also, Vincent from Mister Loth says he'll be there with TK as well. Brilliant. Yeah, we'll all be in the bar. Getting yeah. hammered, probably. <laughs> Except I'm driving, so I can't. Yeah, come and find us, people. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, yeah. Well, uh, our autographs aren't that expensive. Yeah, you just you you'll just see me stood next to the Gumpler stand all day. I'll be just sitting there drinking <laughs> and trying not to spend money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Should, uh, talking about money, we should give something away. Should we give something away? Yeah, should we do giveaway? Yeah, because uh, I'm. You no, know we didn't do last week. Well, we didn't do a giveaway last week because somebody thought they'd done the giveaway when they hadn't. So apologies, we didn't do a giveaway last week. 
Uh, well, it was a telling off. It was when Pete fawned. I thought he was going to tell us. To do yes. It with, but he was telling you to put your jacket on. Because after we finished the stream, I said to Ted, Ted, weren't we doing a giveaway? And he went, oh, I thought I'd done it. No. Oh, oh well. Uh, uh, yeah, it was Pete, told me off, uh, it was Pete telling me off because you hadn't got your jacket on again. Yes. Yeah. Like I have some good. stickers. I have three E-Model stickers to give away. Oh, right. Do you want to do all three or just do one for this week? We've got we'll we'll get do one for the, yeah, we can't, we, we can't, yeah, we'll do one for this week. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll start another one and we'll do a we'll do a walk giveaway as well. One of these. I will physically walk to the post box a hundred yards down the road. See what I do for you people. <laughs> oh, well, you, these are actually slightly bigger than the old ones. Yeah, they are. That, there's a difference in size. Though, They're bigger. They? they cover up your entire face. If I hold it there, you can't see my face now, can you see? It's brilliant. Mm. Right, I'll tell you what, you give, that, you give that one away and then I'll give them all away. Okay, uh, I've got to come up with a question now, haven't I? Yeah, I've got my question. Have you got yours? Okay, I've got my question. Right, and we're going to do it as a first answer. Now remember, uh, it's the first answer we see in the chat and we see chat differently to you guys. So, it's the first person we see who says the answer. You guys see priority with you, what we get. Anyway. Let's just do it. So, if you remember earlier on, I said that I'd uh, I'd done my my thruster bells, new matron, in the in the new uh, UMP gloss primer. The question is, and you've got to wait till I say go. The question is, what colour is it? Go. I can't remember that. There's a clue. There's a clue. <laughs> Not teasing on your mic. <laughs> There we go, mm. Trot and Chard, first one in. Says black. Trot and Chard, thank you, you're very good. Um, send a message to ted at emodels.co.uk. I'll put it in the chat. Ted at emodels.co.uk with your name and address, and I will send you an sticker. And I've learned in this podcast, you know, I got my, my IBM Model M keyboard that's like 1980s clicky t technology really hard for me to do messages in chat while Ted's talking without going but it's a classic 80s goodness you can't you can't go wrong so yes Trot and Chard send me send Ted an email with your address and I will get this sticker sent off to you I'll put a fingerprint on it there you go they never wash it now mm. it's worth millions that, something that, that's coming at Fox's own expense yes Mm. Now I've got a giveaway. I've got a bigger giveaway. I've got the famous e models mug. Oh, hang on a second. Um, Trump says actually I typed that before you said go. Should be the next person. Okay. Oh. Uh, let me find the scroll then. Honourable. So honest. Mm. Um, I've got to find it now. Oh bugger. Uh, Trump, he also says Semprini and Alan Carter and Orange. Um, where is it? I've got to find it. Okay. Uh, the next one was. Uh, do, 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 do you keep talking, to, uh, Ted? What could you, Dave? Yeah, what sorry, could you, Dave, for? Sorry, I'm lost. Um, Why do I call you, Dave? Uh, Dave? The next person was then Steve Shed Scale Models UMP Gloss Black. So, Steve, you send an email to Ted at emodels.co.uk with your name and address, and I'll send you that sticker. So, thank you, Trot and Chard, for being so honest. Yeah. Do, do, do. Uh, so what are you doing? Are you doing a mug now? Uh, right, yeah. I was just looking up a question for the um, for the mug. The mug. Oh, it's going to be some silly complex yeah. thing now, isn't it? No, it's not. How many rivets on the 1927 destroyer? Yeah. yeah. How many rivets were there on the uh, on the dreadnought? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's one. If you were listening, if you've been taking notes. Ah. Yeah. Um. Uh, we, yeah, we showed a model before HMS dreadnought. Uh, when did it enter service? What year did it enter service? Go. Now you have to keep it on the chat, Ted, because I don't know. I wasn't actually paying attention at all. Mm. When did HMS Dreadnought? Was it HMS Dreadnought? Yeah. When did HMS Dreadnought enter, enter service? Enter service. Nineteen sixteen June. Nineteen forty three. Nineteen fifteen. Just need the year. Nineteen oh six. There we I are. Know, then that would be. My uh, is that Osric 9000, the first one? Osric 9000. That's the first one that's popped up on my screen. Hey, Osric 9000. Thank you very much. And send yourself a, an email. I said send yourself a model then. I'm like, what? <laughs> send yourself a model. 
<laughs> Send yourself an email to teddyemodels.co.uk and your emodels mug will be wending its way. Right. Uh, right. Um, now, Ted. Yeah, I've just, sorry, I've just been thrown a curveball, that was all, uh, sort of, um, uh, I've lost, I've lost, I've lost, uh, I've lost you, there you go. You've been there separated you from your gin again, Ted, is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, my gin's getting beyond arm's reach now, and I can't. Oh, this is a bad state of affairs, <laughs> that's bad politics, that is. Uh, right. Man should never be more than an arm's length away from his gin, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you. Oh, hello. Oh, this could be interesting. Mercy Box and Harbour Board. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yes, I haven't got the tie on. No, it, it was a bit too hot in here for a tie, but I've got the jacket on. Yeah, I know. Fox hasn't. Yeah, but it's almost plaid. Almost plaid. Yeah, he's got the green, he's got a green t shirt on. Doesn't that do? He's got a terrible shirt on. Mm. Oh, you, you will. Oh. He. Uh, he said he'll be at Telford. <gasps> Yacht hair is on the move. That's our, that's us. That's us. Yeah, he said he'll be on the UMP stand, and he'll also be with us. Cool. Yeah, but, Let you in. Yeah. Right. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. We'll have our jackets on. I promise you. Yes, sir, we will, sir. I bet it's really hot as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And some stickers. Well. We'll give away some stickers. Thank you very much, sir. I shall inform them. I'll look it up now. Right. Thank you very much. Yes. Goodbye now. Oh, we have a giveaway. Oh, hello. Just so the crowd knows, so everybody knows, Yacht Hair is his secret service name. Mm. Sort of secret service name, nickname. Yacht Hair. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what have we got, Ted? Right. I um I need to go find it. Um, oh. Uh, I, need I, to shall, find... I shall do some interpretive dance for the people. Yes, I find it. Uh, I, yeah, um... it's not interpretive I, dance. I've got to do a hashtag thing now. Uh... Hashtag Eagle Feel. Do do do. Uh, let me have a look at the chat then. Uh, yeah. Lots of numbers. Zalsta says brace, brace. Lynn Dipple says hotline. Chris yeah. says telling Fox to put the jacket on. No, I'm wearing a bad shirt. It makes up for it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Mojo photo says deal or no deal. The back phone rings. Da da. Yeah. Right. Carl uh, from Making Models says he'll be on the UMP stand as well. Jolly good. Raging basis says bloody hell, that's loud. Right. Now I've got to think of a question now. Um, right. Oh, I've got. Yeah, I've got it. Right. Should I do a screen share? It's not a question though, is it? It's a statement they need to put it's on. A them. It's a statement. We'll have to think of a statement, won't we? Well, we can do what we were going to do originally, which is nothing to do with whatever we're going to be giving away now, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, I suppose we could do. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, well, right. We've had a um, word from uh, Sir Peter. Um, the Yacht Hair of Peter. Yeah, yeah. And we have a giveaway this evening. Um, I'm, I'm pressing all the wrong buttons because I'm all nervous. I'm always getting nervous when I talk to Peter, uh, when the boss is on the phone. You, you know, know, it's like when you talk to a copper and you instantly feel guilty, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, clenches just, and you sweat a bit. Just a bit like that. Uh, right, I'll do a screen share and I'll show you what we're going to give away. Courtesy of Peter. Uh, ready? Ready? Yeah, he locked on you. He locked on you. Uh, uh, locked on me? No, I'm not locked on me. I can't. Oh, that, I got me. Right, I can't that. Lock it on me. Right, um, I'm going to do a screen share and courtesy of Peter, we are going to give away this Your desktop. Ooh, ooh, that's a bit different, ooh. isn't it? Israeli Defence Force. Israeli Defence Force, an M3 half track um, from Dragon. I like a nice half track. Dragon actually do some really, really good armour. Really so nice stuff, man. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is this week's great giveaway. That um, is a bit of all right, that. Mm, that's all right, isn't it? We, we were just going to give away a thing for a fiver, but no, Peter. Uh, yeah, we were, gonna, we were just going to give some like, little five pound kit away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but this one, um, 53 quid's worth of plastic mm. kit. Can you do a close up picture of the picture, Ted? So they can. I'll, I'll see if I can get a picture of a picture. Does it, does it expand if you click. Oh, there you go. There's a, there's a photo there's, graph there. There's a photograph there. Whoop. Ooh, look at that one. Paint so, not included. Yeah, That's so there's. Nice. I like all the little flags and things on the side. Uh, it looks like resin. Are they resin as well? Those uh, extras resin. Uh, how do we get out of that? Uh, I don't know. Press it again. Uh, click no. the picture again. I'm clicking the picture. Nothing's happening. Click escape. 
Uh, no, that might not work. No, I'm not. I don't want to click any, click any buttons. Oh, oh. There, we, there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, you know what used to you know what used to bug me when I was a kid when you watch a war film and they used to use American half tracks as German half tracks. I used to drive me nuts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what um, Battle of the Bulge was like that, wasn't it? Something yeah, it's because like they didn't have the money or the German half tracks. But it's like, yeah. oh, I know it's an American half track. God. Damn. Mm. So there, yeah, that's your chance to win a model of the week this week. Um, thank you very much, Pete, mate. Oh, right, let's go back. Do we just go with, um, shall I just make up a phrase now? Why not? We were going to give something else away originally, um, and it was a Star Trek thing, so... <laughs> yeah, the question... Um, yeah, the, the, yeah. This, this week, what we'll do, this is going to be a giveaway, so what we need you to do is you need to put a comment on the video, but not in the chat, not in the chat now. When we finish this stream, about 10 minutes later, the video should be then available on the eModels channel as a regular video. So when the stream is finished, go back in about 10 minutes later to the eModels YouTube channel. Find this video. What was it called this week, Ted? Uh, will Ted ever make a... Will Ted ever do sci-fi? Yeah. Find this week's. It'll be the first on the list. And put a comment on there, on that video. Um, don't worry about spelling. It doesn't matter. The phrase is, damn it, Jim. That's the phrase, damn it, Jim. Because we're going to give a Star Trek model away. So well, put, the, put the phrase, damn it, Jim, as your comment. And what Ted and I will do is next Monday, we'll go in and we'll pick one of those comments at random. This means that if you're watching this live, give it 10 minutes and come back in and do the comments. Uh, if you're not watching it live, you can still enter because you've got until next Monday to put your comment on there. So damn it, Jim. Spell it however you want. Uh, and we will pick a winner next Monday for that lovely, lovely tank. Will you write that down, Ted? I, I will, yeah. Uh, just the, the beauty is when we do this every Monday, we get right. What were we giving away last week? Can't remember. What was the phrase? I've no idea. So, uh, you don't forget what we're giving away. Yeah, I, I probably should show you. Um, I don't want to disappoint people, you see, because now we're talking about it. Um, don't show them what we're going to give them. We could <laughs> do this. Yeah, that's more, again, there that, you go. that was it, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, what we were going to do was going to give that away. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh. hello. Oh, thank you very much. Right. Oh, they'll be happy about that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Oh, good news, everyone. We Apparently it's locked on me. Ah, right. Hang on. Right. It's locked on you. No, it was locked on me. Ah, it was locked on you. Right. Yeah, nobody could see what you were giving, what giving away. Right. Oh, right. Can you see that, then? Uh, I, I'm not. I assume uh, they can. I'm totally at a loss tonight, aren't I? Yes. There we go. There we go. Well, that's Should what we were going to give away tonight, but then we got the half track. Yeah. However, we've just had a phone call. We're giving this away as well. Oh, two giveaways in one night. Two giveaways in one night. Yes. 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 That's... Your hair is strong with this one. Yeah. Um, I think we should go. Yeah. Right. So you have what did you? What was your comment for the? Uh, half... Damn it, Jim. Should we just do that for both of them? Because I'll do two comments otherwise, won't they? Okay. So if you want to win the half track, this is going to get confusing. <laughs> if you want to win the half track, put the comment. Damn it, Jim, which makes no sense at all. If you want to win the Enterprise, um, put the comment. Be uh, me up, Scotty. Be me up, Scotty. There you go. Yeah. And then if, we'll you want, if you want to win both, because it's possible somebody could win both, put both yeah. comments. So, damn it, Jim, if you want to win the half track, be me up, Scotty, or something similar there as if you want to win the Enterprise. Hmm. Uh, you can you can put you know you can do both if you want to. There's, there's it's a random comment picker, so it could theoretically pick the same person for both, which would be handy for postage. Um, but yeah, damn it, Jim! If you want half track, beam me up, Scotty. If you want ten to prize, you better write that down, Ted, because we're not going to remember which one's for which. Uh, you don't yeah, want to send the wrong one to the wrong person. I'll have to I'll have to rewatch the stream later on. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, wait, Ted, we've got two comments. What's that all about? <laughs> yeah, right. Damn it, Jim. Beam me up, Scotty. Yeah, Damn it, Jim. Beam me up, Scotty. It's, it's almost a which one's for which. It's almost a script, isn't it? Damn it, Jim. Beam me up, Scotty. 
<laughs> he never actually said that ever. Uh, it's interesting. Me up, is what he said. Uh, just, uh, just the urban myth. Nate Bliss said he would kit bash the two kits. Interesting. Yeah, why not? That would be interesting. Yeah. yeah. That would be good on the readers. Enter per track. Enter yeah. per track. Star Tank. Yeah. yeah, Star Tank. That would be good on Reader's Gallery. Put that way, yeah. Kit, kit, kit bash it and put it together. Yeah. Let's you can see. make it a track track or a track track. Tra a track track. Half track 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 track. Trick track track. Trick track track. Mm. Uh, TK says, obviously, it's flying to the Netherlands. <laughs> I think it had something. What did, what did it have on that? I, sorry, I'm just going back again. Uh, it was from uh, Space Seed. So you get t Enterprise. Yeah. And and a small botany bay as well. Ah, right, that's what it is. It cl includes new botany beer kit. Right. Okay. So all I can say is, Khan! Mm. I know that's the Khan, not Space Seed, but there you go. Uh, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, see, I don't do star, I don't do sci fi. So, yeah. yeah. Although I do, yeah, I do the original Star Trek. If you say you never watched The Wrath of Khan, I will have to come to Cumbria and just slap you with a wet fish. Uh, right, bring your wet fish to Telford. Oh, he's never watched The Wrath of Khan. People tell him he has to watch The Wrath of Khan. It's the best. It's the only good Star Trek film there is. It's the best one. And mm. Trot and Chard has just written something down that I can hear in my head now. He's written down Botany Bay. Botany Bay. Damn. <laughs> yes, it's in my head. I'm hearing Chekhov say that. <laughs> we have to get out of here. No, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Never mind. Uh, right. Um, right, we've been going nearly two hours now. <gasps> Holy I, think, I think this has been one of the longest. Uh, right. Uh, hang on. I'll ask if I can announce this. Oh, hello. Mm. It's getting a bit crazy now. Uh, I don't know what's happening, people. This is why you have to stay to the end of the podcast, because there's all kinds of crazy mm. nonsense going on. Jeff Longman says, just up didn't say goodnight, everyone. Jeff, stay there. You, I don't know what's happening. There could be something happening. So don't wait. Wait till we finish. We're only going to finish in a minute. We'll wait till because we, Ted's doing something. So. Ted wasn't I've in the space. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Just wait for the phone to ring. Do -do -do. Check out with the B5 cattle. Hello. Hello, Peter. Hi again. Thank you. Yes, I, yeah, I've been waiting for your call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris, me oh, too. That's good news. Should I tell Mr. Fox that? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Right. He will be pleased. He may have somewhere else to spend his money. Hello. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Yes, yes, I look forward to seeing you too. Thank you. Don't forget the stickers. Bye. I thought you were going to say yes, love you too. Then yes, <laughs> um, they are the importer, and e models will soon be importing Bandai models. Yes, yes, yes. Da, 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 da. It's worked. I've nagged him for months. Yeah. Did yeah. he say anything specific like Gumpler? Uh, he didn't. Uh, I think the details are still being thrashed out. <laughs> yep, so everybody, yep, uh, it's news live tonight. Live, we have a news headline that e models will soon be importing Bandai models. Do uh, so, so they're on, they're on the case. They have taken your requests and they have dealt with the the. Um, oh, does, if that if that see if that happens if if we actually start getting gun playing, that means I can make gunpla for e models videos. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, so I would think, yeah. When you see Peter, when everybody sees Peter at um, Telford, you can hug him. So we should wait with bated breath and see exactly what that means. <laughs> uh, right. And now Fox is on high. I think it's time to close down before he collapses with uh, shock. Uh, and uh, say good night to everybody. Uh, great news all round. Two giveaways, a cup, the stickers. Great news like that. What a fantastic evening this is. Good. This is to remember. Me. Remember, don't forget. Um, damn it, Jim, if you want the half track. Somehow I've remembered this. Um, beam me up, Scotty, if you want the Enterprise with the Botany Bay. Or both, if you want both. If you're not watching this live, you can still take part. Just go and put the comment on this video that you're watching now with your eyes. Uh, and we'll draw the winner next Monday. And yes, Bandai. Yes, right. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing lots of big wheeze now because I'm dead excited. I'm like a puppy dog. 
three we tennis were, balls. Yeah, we will now go and have a celebratory drink. Um, oh, we'll all the drinks. We will wish everybody good night and thank you for joining us once again on this eModels live stream, courtesy of eModels, eModels.co.uk. Go down look at the website. You never know what you'll find. There's all sorts of right, right, Yes. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 I'm good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep waving, Fox. Um,